to Well, it's Friday night, you know what that means, another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you're gracing us with your presence, welcome, super happy to have you here. Where this works is really simple. On your screen, you're gonna see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Now, sometimes I have the answer, sometimes, believe it or not, I do not, but either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care, especially in the fall. It's a great time of year, it's slowing down and good time to talk about things that have happened throughout the year, lawn successes, plans for next season, all that jazz. As always, we're coming to you guys live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So those of you that are chiming on Instagram, feel free to be part of the conversation as well. Drop your questions, concerns, comments, anything you wanna chat about in the chat, and I will make sure you are part of the conversation as well. Guys, gals, well, here in the great state of Georgia, we have had freezing temps, freezing temps, like several days in the 30s, low 30s, 32 degrees, freezing actually, and it's taking a hit on the lawn. I got to tell you, I mean, it's the lawn is not, any little bit of green that I had is long gone. I mean, there's a few areas that are hanging on, but overall, lawn is checking out. Sounds like that's a common theme across the Southeast United States. And uh, it's just kind of par for the course this time of year, right? I'll show you guys some videos and some pictures of the lawn, as well as share some results from viewers that have, you know, done work over their lawns over the season. So stay tuned. It should be a fun show tonight. And uh, let's get into it. So let's see who we have in the live stream this evening. All right. First up, we got Mr. Aaron Pate. He's kicking it off. Kicking us off. He says, next year, I want to start with the max rate of prodiamine to control summer weeds like crabgrass. 
So what product would you use in the fall to control winter weeds? Great question, Aaron. So if you're gonna go with prodiamine in the spring, you wanna use the, the max rate, then in the fall, depending on your grass type, you would have to switch to a different pre-emergent. So if you have warm season grass, like Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine, uh, I would highly recommend going with Spectacle Flow. This is about as good as you can get for pre-emergent on warm season turf, especially when you're trying to keep Poanua out of your lawn. You can also use Dithiapir in the fall. It's a more cost-effective option, but really, you know, if you want the gold standard for fall pre-emergent on warm season turf, it's really tough to beat Spectacle Flow. Awesome, awesome product. This is what I would I would use given your plans for next year. So I hope that helps. And and the thing is, uh, Aaron, you didn't, again, you didn't say what kind of grass you have. The one thing you have to keep in mind when it comes to Spectacle is that it is for warm season grass only. You do not want to use Spectacle on a cool season lawn. It'll give it a big ouchie, so don't, don't uh, don't do that. But it's uh, the, the the nice thing about it. A couple things. One, as far as its control over Poanua, you know, I've I've done straight prodiamine. I've done Dithiapir. I've done a blend. I've done like the poor man spectacle flow, which is um, prodiamine, simazine, and amazequin. So if you're using the branding products, it would be Barricade, uh, Princep, and Image, and that that combination does a pretty good job of controlling. POA in your lawn. You got like a post-emergent herbicide and a couple of pre-emergents that does a pretty good job. The thing that it doesn't do as well as Spectacle is it doesn't last quite as long. So Spectacle, you if you apply it at, you know, 0.2 ounces per thousand, really that's going to get you six months or so of coverage. So really a single application of Spectacle Flow can carry you into late winter, early springtime. That's what I've traditionally done in the past. Uh, this year, I'm just playing with something different. I'm, tr I'm changing it up a little bit. So this year, instead of applying Spectacle at the 0 0.20 rate, which is on the higher end, just one time in September, what I did is I applied this product at 0 0.10 in September. I'm going to do another 0 0.10 at uh, the end of this month. So in the, between September, between November, and December, I'm going to put another tenth down, and then that will be it. And I mean, honestly, I don't expect there to be a lot of breakthrough with Poanua, but I'm just looking for something to do at the end of the year. So I'm playing with different rates and just, just doing testing and just seeing what kind of results I get. My plan also is whenever I do the other application of Spectacle the end of this month, so between November going into December, like after Thanksgiving, is to put a little bit of certainty in the tank as well. This is an excellent post-emergent herbicide for Poanua, which is the, the primary weed that I'm trying to keep out of my lawn over the winter, the fall and winter months. So this combination, uh, the end of next month, or end of this month rather, will will, will do the trick, I think, as far as uh, one, preventing breakthrough, and then if I had any poanua that was uh, trying to rear its ugly head, certainty should make pretty quick work of it. So hope that helps, sir. If you can let me know what kind of grass you have, we can revisit that. Now, if you have cool season grass, don't use Spectacle. You'd go with Dithiapir or, um, or you know, one of the other, um, pre-emergent options. So hope that helps. Need anything else? Let me know. All right. So here on Instagram, we got Arecibo, we got Duche, Texas Blank in the house. Thanks you guys for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. Next up, we have Jason Harrison. He says, it's time for Christmas decorations. It is. It is. You know, it's actually before the show, I was talking to Alex out in the driveway and that's what his plans are for this weekend. You know, Halloween's over, it's gone. And it's a time of year where if you're going to, you know, put up lights and, you know, get your your uh, your lawn all set up to win the best Christmas decoration contest in your neighborhood, assuming your neighborhood does that, it's about time to start planning that and getting that done. So I think Alex is working on that this weekend. I'm kind of lame. I don't put up, I, I have like, put like a Christmas tree up in the window, but I don't really do lights or any kind of decorations for Halloween because it's just a bunch of work and I just don't do it. What can I say? I know I'm that I'm that person on the street, right? It'll be like lights, 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 nothing. Lights, 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 lights. So pretty easy to figure out which uh, which place is mine, which house is mine. All right, next up, we have Baba Bev. All right, I think you're new. I've not seen your name before. If you are new, welcome. So good evening, Ron. I have some type of red berry that comes through my bushes once a season. Do you know what these red berries are and how I would prevent them from coming back next season? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, without a picture, uh, Baba Bev, it's really tough to know exactly what you're what you're dealing with. If you want, send a photo here to Ron at golfcourselawn.com. That's my email address. If you send me a picture of what you're dealing with, I can take a look at it after the show and, and get you an answer. Let you know what I think. But it's it's tough to know exactly how to prevent it um, without knowing what you're um, 
what you're dealing with. It might be that whatever shrub you have, that's just what it does, right? That's, this, is the, this is something that just produces this time of year. So I don't, I mean, you, the answer might be get rid of those shrubs, whatever the bushes are that you have, uh, you get rid of them if you don't want, um, if you don't want the red, the red berries. It almost, sounds, almost sounds like a holly, but maybe, I don't know, you'd have to, that's, yeah, you send me a picture of it and I'd have to look at it and, and let you know what I, um, what I think. But Honestly, if it's if it's like it's flowering or it's throwing off a fruit or it's creating like those berries, that is likely the behavior of whatever plant you have. And if you don't like that, you're gonna have to change to a different plant. There's not really, I'm trying to think if there's any way you could be able to prevent that. I mean, maybe a growth regulator, but I, I kind of doubt it. You're you're gonna want to just use a different type of plant if you don't like the uh, the berries that it produces. But send me a picture. I'll take a look and I'll do my best to help you out. All right. Next up is Zoysia Dad. He says, "Good evening." Uh, Sabinim. I am not Sabinim yet. I'm not Sabinim. So Sabinim is reserved for fourth Don, which I am not. I'm a third degree black belt. So you have to put Boo in front of it. So Boo Sabinim. Like, you know, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever, you know, you're someone that is special to you, you call him Boo. Boo. It's like that. Boo Sabinim. Not, not, uh, not Sabinim. Not as yet. All right. So, uh, next up, Zoja Dad has a question. He says, I'm curious, why did you stop using Melorganite as your granular fertilizer? Inquiring minds want to know. Besides the price increase, was it because of the phosphorus content? The, that uh, the biggest thing is is the price increase, right? So it was, it was cost it was cost more to use melorganite than fertilizers from Lebanon and turf, which in in every way for everything that I'm trying to do are better, right? I mean, you, know, you look at the like melorganite, you've got um, I mean it's an organic fertilizer, or, I mean, or it's a non-burning fertilizer is probably a better way of saying it. Not truly organic, but it's non-burning type fertilizer. And, um, you know, given what it would, what the current cost of Melorganite, it costs like $125 to do my lawn one time with Melorganite, which is kind of pricey, right? So compare that to a single bag of Humic Max or, you know, the Stress 024 or any, any of the Lebanon Turf fertilizers, I get more input, right? So I get more nitrogen, more, um, if I had my soil needed phosphorus, I would get more of that. I would get more potassium for each application. I also get kelp, I get humic acid, I get micronutrients. So overall, it's just a better product for feeding the lawn than using Milo. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Milo. It's just, it, it doesn't make sense for larger lawns in my opinion. And now that there's that new fertilizer that we, we just started carrying, this year from Miramichi Green, the new organic, there's really no reason to do it because it does everything that Milo does and more, right? That Our fertilizer also contains a bit of potassium, has the same iron, has, um, I think it has some humate in it, has a microbial package. So as far as improving the soil biology, that's ro ro um, rolled into that as well too. So for me, there's just not a whole lot of reasons or there's not, there's not, uh, Milo is even less appetizing, even less, um, you know, something that I'd want to use in my lawn given the current options. So if you like it and you're getting great results with it, and especially if you have a smaller lawn where it's like economically is not that big a deal, then continue to use it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Milo. I mean, if you, if you, if you like it and you like the results you get with it, go for it. But I think a product like this, for example, so if you go to shop and then, um, not weed killer, shop and lawn fertilizer, this new, the new premium organic from Miramichi Green, like I think this is superior to Milo in every way. It's, it's a truly organic product. It's Armory listed. Uh, it's got, yeah, you know, it's a balanced fertilizer. So I mean, just it's better, better product overall. So if you want to go the organic route, like this is a much better way to go. You've got, it comes at a 40, 45 pound bag until we sell out of them and then 50 pound bags. So, you know, it, that's, that is what I would go with. As a matter of fact, as always your dad, that is what I used on my front lawn this season. The back lawn got Humic Max, the front lawn got this, got the triple four, uh, from, uh, from Miramichi, the new organic fertilizer. So hope that helps, sir. Have any other questions, feel free to let me know. But yeah, Milo's, I think I was at, when I was at Home Depot buying a, a replacement hose, I looked at the price of Milo and it was like $26 a bag, which for what it is, is steep. Especially when I says I gotta go get it, right? I mean, you look at this, for this price, you get more coverage and it's shipped to your door versus having to go to Home Depot, pay, you know, pay a lot, um, pay honestly more per thousand square feet for the application. It's less good product. It's just like a whole lot of reasons to just not want to do that. So there you go. Jason Harrison is saying, yep, same in Charlotte. So Jason is also getting some of that freezing, freezing weather. I'll show you guys, show you guys the lawn. Uh, these are some pictures that I took in the morning of what it looks like. So 32 degrees on the golf course lawn. This is what I'm working with. Literally there's, you can see ice or a little bit of ice on the, the roofs of the houses in the background. 
and the entire lawn is covered. So, uh, so yeah, it is, it is checked out. There's a little bit of green still near the patio, but overall, the two, two days of cold weather that we've got, well, more than two days, but the, but the last two days we've had temperatures in the 30s, low 30s, and that really has caused the Bermuda to say, deuces, see you, uh, baby, I'll be back next year. Let's check it out, it's done. It's done, it's, uh, it's tired. We'll see though, right? Because even though we've had temps in the 30s, if we get, you know, some 50s and 60s as we can get in Georgia in, you know, in the the winter month, in the fall and winter months, it might get a little bit of green to come back through. But overall, the lawn the lawn is going is going dormant. This uh, this cold snap did a number on it, which I'm fine with, right? You know, I got here's the next thing, guys. One of my talking points for tonight. This past weekend, you know, it was the um, it was the transition from October to November. So I got my last fungicide application down. I got, I, I used Pillar SC. So I did that, got my fungicide app down. And so the lawn is now pretty much put to bed. It's in great shape for, um, for disease prevention. The only thing I really have left to do as far as inputs for the rest of this year are, um, is spectacle. Like I'm gonna do another spectacle app at the end of this month. And that will be, uh, that'll be it. If w temperatures warm up a little bit, I could give it a, a spray of the carbon kit, like the release 901C carbon kit, but outside of that, it's uh, it's pretty much done. I'm just gonna sit there and look at it and maybe take the outlet out and turf rake it a little bit and you know just just uh, just scratch my itch to do something in the lawn. But overall, it's looking kind of frosty right now, as you guys can see. So that's fine. 2024 will be here before we know it, which is which is gonna be a you know great season, just like this season was, and can't wait, cannot wait. All right. Next up, we have Jackie Bear. Jackie Bear, a common a common staple of the live stream, always here, always supporting the show, as many of, as, of you others are also here as well, too. He says, Brother Ron, have an excellent stream. Hey, everybody, what's going on, Jackie? Coming out of the woodwork, you're not just here lurking today. I see, I see you, I see you. And then Jason says, me too. I got to lead the way and show that spirit with uh, Christmas lights. I like that. And uh, next up, much like me, Jason also says, my final apps are done and soil test was solid. Time to relax for a few months. Yeah, man, that's that's the thing. I mean, this time of year, get your preventative fungicide apps done if you want to do that. Get your soil testing done. So at least if you need to do a pH adjustment, you're doing that now. If not, you've got your, you know, your, your the hard work's already done as far as getting ready for next season. You know, you can start planning out your, your nutrient program. So yeah, I like it, Jason. Nicely done, nicely done. All right, we have another question here. This one is from Mr. Jared George. He says, cold snap hit and we are around 30, two nights in a row. Bermuda looks dormant now. That's about right. Uh, back to the 50s now. I'd rather pull weeds, but I worry about soil exposure, the holes leave to cold weather. Uh, a risk? Not one that I would really be too worried about, Jared. I mean, I mean, how much weeds are we talking about here? If you have like a, a handful here and there, if you pull the weeds, if you hand pull the weeds, is there a likelihood you might get a little bit of breakthrough in that one area? Possibly, but I really wouldn't worry about it. I would get rid of the weeds if it were me. I would, I would pull them. I wouldn't, I would not let the fact that you're concerned about the potential of breakthrough in the area where you're pulling weeds keep you back from getting the weeds out of the lawn. I would, I would absolutely pull them. Worth the worth the risk is what I'm trying to say. All right. Next up is Harpo Fashion. Granger's in the house. What's going on, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Hopefully all is going well. See you, see you, uh, see you, man. Thanks for coming to hang out and supporting us here on the Facebook. Hopefully you and Mary are doing well. Hopefully you guys are doing all right. And then Offered NV is in the house here on Instagram saying, hey, Ron, 100%. It is Friday. It is. It is Friday. It is Friday. You know, guys, some of you guys ask about doing in my video on Instagram. What, what I need to do maybe is um, maybe during the week sometime, maybe on a Wednesday night or so, I'll do a live stream just on Instagram. And if someone wants to come on live, then then we can we can see about making that happen. I thought about playing with the idea of doing it on the on the show here as well, like having folks just they want to ask a question. Um you know, throwing up a link, then you guys can can connect in and ask your question. But you got to be concise. You got to make sure that you, your audio is good and you're on video and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's uh, there's there will be a checklist to make sure you have all these things to make sure that it's a good experience for everyone that's watching. But it's something I'm playing with. You guys have to let me know what you guys think. If like having people um, you know call in and to have like you know very briefly ask a question and we can talk about it live uh, is something you guys would want to see. Something I'm thinking about. Well, we'll you know have to put some more thought into it. You guys just let me know. Uh, let's see here. Actually, you know, we'll make it a poll question. Why not? Let's see. We will do, we'll start a poll. Um, video 
or do you guys just like just at just asking over the uh in the chat video questions uh from viewers we'll see what you guys think all right next up isaac mumperaus he says happy friday everyone still super green here in new jersey you gotta rub it in right it's like a, it's like a light flex what's going on i got you we're, we're, we're dormant, but you're so green. I got you. His iron application from Halloween is still going strong. I like it, Isaac. Very, very nice. Nice to hear that. Glad to hear that your lawn is still looking good, as it should be, as it should be. You know, we got a picture from Ted Rogers. You guys remember, Ted was the guy that did the fescue renovation. Much like most of the people that did renovations from seed, Ted went through all the phases of a seeding project. You know, he did all the prep work. He put down the seed. Of course, there was a torrential downfall, downfall in the in the process of that, and he went through the, the stages of oh, you know, all the grass, all the grass seed is washed away, all my time is wasted. I just start over. This is it. You know, the sky's falling. And he sent me a picture a couple of days ago of what his lawn looks like now, and you guys can take a look. So that lawn was seeded. I believe it was like September's when he worked on it. And you can see how good that's looking now. Nice, thick, green, lush. Nice work, Ted. Very, very cool. So you guys with cool season lawns, this is your go time, right? You guys are, are living your best life. Your lawns are looking awesome. Whereas us with warm season, warm season turf are making little iron applications and, you know, trying to bounce sunlight off the lawn to try and get it to, to stay green. But yeah, you guys are, are are having fun now while we are are moping, wanting some, some warmer weather, right? All right, BMH is up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's up, BMH? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Appreciate you. And then Steven... Thompson is up next. He says, hey Ron, I was worried about some washout of my spectacle flow because of a large slope and over five inches of rain. I applied the 0.15 ounce rate prior to the rain, applied again yesterday at 0.05 ounces. A few areas look yellow. Okay, so I wouldn't have worried about washout, Stephen. I mean, you know, you, you applied spectacle flow as a liquid. I mean, yes, five inches of rain is a lot of rainfall, especially if it all came down all at once. If it came down over couple of days is not that big a deal, but if it all came at once, which would be a lot, um, you know, even then I really, I really wouldn't worry about it too much, man. I mean, you applying, doing another app of 0 0.05, I don't know that was strictly necessary, but you, you did it. And then you said a few areas look yellow. So are you sure that you, as far as your application, you didn't, you didn't go, you weren't too heavy handed because that can happen, right? If you, if you um, go a bit heavy handed with spectacle, you can, you can, it can yellow the grass temporarily. It also could be just that given that the temperatures are falling, that your lawn's starting to go dormant. Could be that too, right? So it could be a combination of you maybe heavy handed in an area where you're seeing the discoloration, or it could be just the lawn going dormant over time, which, um, which is completely normal. Given where you are now, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, right? So you've already applied it. I would not put any more down regardless of how much more rain you get. You know, that a single application of spectacle, especially at the rates that you did, are enough really for six months. So if you do that application now, you know, we're in November, you're going to be good until February, March, whenever you decide to do your spring pre-emergent app. So you're good to go. Rain, even with the rain that's come down, I really would not um, add any more pre-emergent. You should be in great shape. Certainly not any more spectacle. All right, so next up, you said sprayed about two months apart and the most recent app just slightly watered in. Can't wait to enjoy the stream. Nice. Yeah, so if, if, if you do the first one in two months ago, so September, September, and then the second one, you know, I guess yesterday or, or here recently, you're fine. I, I really wouldn't put, um, wouldn't worry about it too much. Again, spectacle, like this whole thing that people have of, you know, I apply a granular product and I get a bit of rainfall, even an inch or two, in your case, five inches of rain over... If, over a couple of days that you're, it's all going to wash out and you're going to lose it is just in, for most people, it's just really not a thing. It's really, really not founded. And I certainly would not go out and apply more product based on that. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you had a, if you had a sandy soil, like a very sandy soil, that's where you might find the product has the potential to leach, to leach through the, the soil profile. But I mean, that's such, such an edge case. I don't even really like what we want to talk about it. So I wouldn't, Long short of it is if you apply a granular product or you apply a liquid product to your lawn and you get heavy rainfall afterwards, especially if it's a pre-emergent, that's a good thing. You want to you want to, to use that free water to water into the, the soil where it can work and do what it's supposed to do. I would not worry about uh, about washout uh, and that that kind of thing. So there you go. Final answer. Uh, don't don't apply any more pre-emergent. You should be good to go based on what you described to me. All right, we got our first super chat of the evening. Mr. Archie Amos 
supporting the channel monetarily. We appreciate that, Archie. Thank you so much. Super chat perceived. He says, wake up LG, time to go. You know, did we see LG last week, guys? We may have to put out, send out like a search party. I, I don't recall seeing LG last week. So, you know, it, one week in a row, okay, two weeks. You know, if we, we don't see him tonight, we may have to, uh, we have to send out a search party to find out what's going on with him because uh, that's, that's that's unlike him. It's unlike him. He's probably just lurking knowing, knowing LG. Normally some Tango Bolero brings it out, but you know, we have to do some more tonight to see if we can get him to, to surface. Well, there you go, Archie. Thank you so much again for the super chat. Really do appreciate the support. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. All right, moving back up, moving back up, moving back up. Let us see where we left off. The hardest part of doing the live stream is Aaron Pate. No, I'm sorry, it's Los. Los is up. He says, Hey Ron, I'm having issues on my lawn with moss. What do you recommend to get rid of it? It's a great question, Lois. So when it comes to moss, we want to figure out first of all why um, why you're having the issue. So low so low soil pH can create additions for moss to develop, but also moss tends to really show up in areas of your lawn that get a lot of rain and where the water set where it tends to settle, and um, and and is also heavily shaded. So if you have that combination, whenever you get rainfall, water pools or stays in that section of the lawn for a while, and it's also doesn't get a lot of sunlight, Those cre that creates conditions for moss to develop. So if you have a drainage issues, if the thing one that I'm explaining is, is what's the case in your lawn, I would work to correct that. So if you have an area of your lawn that does not drain well whenever you receive rainfall, fix that because there are, there are products you can use to get rid of moss. Like Scott's makes a product it's called Moss X that will will get rid of it. But if you don't adjust the conditions that are causing the moss to develop in the first place, it's just going to come back. So you're going to be just chasing your tail. Something you also find too is lawns that don't normally have moss or don't have issues with moss in the spring and summertime. When you get into the fall, where you know an area that is slower to drain um, may not have been such an issue, and again, in the spring and summer when when temps are higher. Now when it's when temps are cooler, where that what we're you know, the water just tends to stick around a little bit longer, you can start seeing moss in those sections. So it really will highlight, um, you know, potential drainage problems. So thing, things to check uh, is your soil pH, because if that's low, again, that moss tends to like to develop in more acidic soil. And then second, drainage. That's a, that's a, big, that's a big part of this. So if you combine low pH to so acidic soil, a uh, water that, that pools or stays in that area of the lawn or just stays wet for a long period of time. And then also it doesn't get a lot of sunlight. So it's a shaded area. That's the conditions that will cause, um, cause you to have issues with moss. I've also got a, a thing one. So once you do all those, do all of that, the product that I would say that you can use to get rid of moss, you might be able to find it at your local big box store, but it's a product called, yeah, here it is, Moss X. I think Scott's makes it. So I'll send you a link for that, Los. So at Los, there we go. Um, this is Moss X. So that will uh, that will do it. And then we also, if you want some more, you know, I guess or, organic ways of controlling moss in your lawn, I've got a blog post that I'm looking up right now that I will I'll get to you. Yep, how to get rid of a moss in your lawn. It it highlights or talks about a lot of the things that I just spoke about. But if you want to want a quick read, this will uh, will get you all squared away. Um, how, how to get rid of moss. There you go, in your lawn. So I hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. And we see, see what you did, um, Archie. We got LG, you brought him out. He's here live and direct. He says, celebrates 22 months, almost two years of channel membership. Thank you so much for that, LG. We gotta clap it up for that. Appreciate all the consistent love and support. He says, he says, I'm alive and here in the flesh. And just for that, LG, just because you made yourself known again for two, almost two years of supporting the channel, we'll put some Tango Bolero on for you while I look for the next question and have a sip of my Arnold Palmer. And if you guys have not hit the like button, you know, we're almost half an hour in, you guys are learning anything or just at least having fun, Hit that like button. It's a free way to support the channel. I really do appreciate it. Sends good vibes to YouTube and sends more folks this way. So feel free to hit that like button ever so gently. All right, next up, we have Aaron Pate. He's back. He says, so I've noticed I have some cool season grass mixing with my St. Augustine. What do you think about using atrazine to kill, kill the cool season grass? Uh, that's a strategy. You, you could do that, um, Aaron. 
you could, what I would say is use Celsius. I'm not sure what, what cool season grasses atrazine is labeled to control. What you can use is a product like Celsius. Like, um, depending on the size of your lawn, you can go with a single use package, but Celsius and surfactant. This is a, a great combination for getting rid of cool season grasses in your St. Augustine, and it minimizes the chance of you having any kind of issues with injury to, to your lawn. So I would use uh, Celsius. Celsius with surfactant, uh, that, would, that would do the trick. Because again, Celsius is a, it's a in gentle, it's an easy, um, it's a gentle herbicide on your warm season grasses, your zoysia, bermuda, St. Augustine grasses, but it's also very good at controlling cool season grass. So if you're trying to remove that selectively, that is what I would use. Hope that helps. Great, great question. Appreciate it. So, and, and it sounds like we got the answer right for you because you said you have St. Augustine, that's the grass you're trying to keep. So in your case, Spectacle would be just fine. And another thing too, if you use Spectacle, uh, that will also injure the cool season grass in your lawn too. So if you use this pre-emergent on a St. Augustine lawn that has cool season grass sprinkled in it, that's also going to knock the cool season grass back. Where you can find Spectacle is here on the golf course lawn. So if you go to shop and then weed killer, and then you sort pre-emergent, you will find Spectacle right here. It is not cheap, but it is the best. It is awesome stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'll get you a link here to that, uh, Aaron, in case you decide you want to pick that up. Again, that one bottle will treat like three acres. So you'll you'll have that bottle for a while. What you can also do is if you got like friends, cousins, people you kind of like that also work on their lawns, you guys can split it. Like, you know, you could pay, you get the bottle and you can give half of it to them. You're still gonna have more than a spectacle for several seasons, you know, depending on the size of your lawn, it's, it's plenty. A little bit goes a very long way with this product is what I'm trying to say. Good stuff. All right, next up is to Trilla, the Trilla from Manila. He says, happy Friday, Ron, Trap Action Gang. We got the first frost this week in Georgia and the lawn finally started going to sleep. What a wonderful season it was, but I can't wait to do it all over again. Right, right, you know what I mean? It's been... It's been a fun, um, a fun 2023, but 2024 is gonna be here before you know it, man. We're like, you know, two and a half months out, two and a half months out before it's gonna be, you know, pre-emergent time, spring pre-emergent time here in Georgia. So just, you know, enjoy this, enjoy this downtime. It's gonna be back, it's gonna be back before you know it. Don't you, um, don't you worry. Let your not, let your heart not be troubled. Uh, the, you know, we'll be out there, we'll be out there back in the lawn in no time. In no time. And you never know, Tuchula. You know you know how Georgia weather is anyway. It's cold right now, but a couple of weeks from now, it might jump back into the 70s, you know, 60s, 70s. It's happened. Two years ago, not this past winter, but the 20, let me see, 2023, 2022. So 2021, that was the, the winter that was unseasonably warm, where in December we had temperatures at some, like a stretch of time there where temps were gotten into the 70s and the grass actually started greeting up again. So who knows? We'll see what, uh, what Mother Nature has in store for us this uh, this fall and winter. All right, next up we have Zoysia Dad. He says, do you need to water in foliage fung fungicide like you would for granular, or would you let it soak into the grass blades to be more effective? Yeah, so the when it comes to Pillar SC, even though it's a liquid fungicide, you still water this in. So the the droplet or the, the, the spray tip you'd want to use for this is a flood jet tip, so a larger droplet size. Even though it's a liquid, you still want to water this in. You're still going to want to put down, you know, a quarter of an inch to half an inch of water to help wash it down in the soil profile. Um, you're still going to want to water in is, is a long short. There are a few edge cases where you would want to spray a fungicide and allow it to stay on the, um, on the leaf, but that's not the case with Pillar SC or with Headway G. Both of those, you're going to want to apply them and water them in. It's a good question, Zoysia Dad. So pretty much the fungicides that we carry on the golf course lawn store, which you can find here if you go to shop and fungicide insecticide, if it will load, we'll see. Well, I'll make a note while, while I'm, I'm messing with that. Stop and reload and shop and fungicide insecticide. There we go. So if you come here and sort by fungicides, any of these, so pillar, headway, caravan, all of them need to be watered in. All of them should be watered in after application. So hope that helps Zoysia Dad. Even though they're liquids, uh, they still need to be watered in. So, uh, so yeah. 
The ones that don't will specifically say that. And normally it's it's for specific diseases. It depends on the kind of disease you're trying to, to treat is where you would not, you know, you'd want, you'd allow it to, to you spray it on the on the foliage or the, the the plant that's been infected and allow it to dry. But um, read the uh, the label for for that kind of guidance. With the stuff that we carry, it's easy, easy mode. Apply it, water it in, go on with your day. All right, next is Jared George. He says, Jared, you just got you just got the Bermuda going. Why do you want to switch? He says, if I decide to switch to cool season in my backyard, I will attempt to kill off my Bermuda first. But I know that's tough. With that said, what cool season grass is the best shot to outcompete Bermuda? None of them, really. I mean, if you're gonna try and get rid of Bermuda, what I would say is, I mean, there's there's a concoction you can use to do it. You can use Fusilade 2 um, and Glyphosate. Like that combination is very good. It's like devastating against Bermuda. Like Fusilade by itself, it's, it's okay. Like, I mean, it'll, it'll, at higher rates, it does a decent job. But if you combine Fusilade 2 and Glyphosate, that's a very, that's the closest I've personally found from my testing to a one and done when it comes to knocking Bermuda back for an, ex, you know, to, to, the, to the point where you could then get rid of the existing, like the dead grass and then start your, your renovation to go to cool season grass. So uh, Fusilade and, and Glyphosate will do that. So what you could do is you could get, I'll show you, I think we carry, we're carrying Fusilade now. So if you go to um, shop and then weed killer, Fusilade is right here, Fusilade two. And then for your Roundup, you can get like Eraser or you can get the individual, the, the Quick Pro that you can go with these two. The nice thing about this is it has surfactant in it. So you could literally mix one of these um, with some Fusilade in a gallon of water and then and go to town and knock out. That's enough for a thousand square feet of um, a Bermuda that you're trying to kill off. So really depends on which way you're trying to go, um, Jared. I would absolutely, absolutely um, get rid of the Bermuda grass before you try and int you try and do cool season grass because it's just you're gonna be, it's gonna be a losing battle. You're not you're not gonna you're not gonna get a good result with the cool season lawn establishing if you leave the Bermuda around. What will happen is say you were to do it this time of year, right? Which is a little bit late in the season, but say you were trying to do it now. Um, what would happen is you could get the cool season grass to begin to start growing in, but as soon as spring of next year hits, Bermuda is gonna wake up and you're gonna have a mess on your hands. So. What I would say is if you're, that's the decision you're planning to make, which I don't know why you would do that, man, because you just got your Bermuda growing in, but if you, whatever, different strokes for different folks. If you decide you want to do that, get rid of the Bermuda first and then transition or move over to a cool season grass of your of your choice. Um, I like the way rye grass looks, but it really depends on which what uh, which way you want to go. You can do rye grass, fescue, it just depends on, on your preference of what you think looks uh, looks good. All right, next up is Colin. Colin's in the house. C. Pims is gracing us with his presence this evening. He says, what's up, Ron? Just put down my second fungicide application yesterday. Prep for this winter. I like it. Pound it. Good job, sir. I like that. Love it, man. It's a great, great way to keep your, uh, you know, a good 2024 season starts now. So great work on getting your, uh, your fungicide, your second fungicide app done. You and I are in in uh in light company we've both done that done that all right so let's see the end of the poll let's see what you guys think you guys are saying uh, to like doing questions or having people on video live so 18 percent said no 81 percent said yes um poll yes yeah, so 37 votes cool yeah so some of you guys majority of you the ones that voted would like to do that but again if if i decided to um we'll have to give it a shot sometime but if we said decide, decide to do that you got to be like i'm gonna have to see you have to be on video so i can see who I'm talking to and you have to have like a headset and so that there's not like feedback issues and this kind of thing. And there's got to be a limit as far as time. Like you can't get on here and like, you know, read me in the encyclopedia. You gotta have like a good question, well phrased, short, and then we'll just go that route. So it might be something to play with. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll give it a shot here and see how it, how it works out. All right. Next up is Charles Westmoreland. Charles Westmoreland. He says, hello, Ron and crew. Greetings from Northern Virginia. My fescue rye Kentucky bluegrass mix is still growing. I'll be putting down gypsum and lime apps tomorrow along with my liquid bio stims and hydrotain. I like it. In your case, Charles, you know, your lawn is still doing well. You're, you got a cool season lawn and continue feeding it, man. As long as it's growing, you, as long as you're still mowing it, continue to feed it. So it sounds like you got a, a good concoction plan for tomorrow. Some gypsum, Lime and your liquid bio stems. I dig it. I dig it. 
All right, we got Vahid Navi from the great, uh, from Canada, from up north saying, hey, hi there, Ron. Uh, what is the best time to put down dormant grass seed? Thank you. I don't, I mean, why would you put, I guess, why would you put down, what do you mean by dormant grass seed? You, are you saying like put down, apply grass seed when the lawn is dormant and just with the expectation that it's going to germinate in the spring? If that's what you're asking, I wouldn't do that. I would apply the grass seed. I would sow the grass seed whenever conditions are correct for it to germinate and begin growing. And I wouldn't go out there and put out grass seed like when it's winter in the middle of winter time. Uh, just saying, you know, whenever springtime rolls around, I'm hoping it's going to germinate. That's that's not a strategy that I would uh, that I would employ. So, if that's the question you're asking, assuming I'm reading it properly, I understand what you're asking. My answer would be like never. I would not. I would not do that. I would wait until conditions are right for the grass to germinate, and I would apply. I would you know do all your prep work, and then uh, you know put your, put your grass seed out, and and then and allow it to come in. That's what I would do. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, like, for example, if you're planning on, if we, if we use your example, let's say I wanted to do a renovation of my Bermuda lawn, right? Which I don't know why you would do this time of year. And say someone's going to go put out like grass seed now, right? Bermuda grass seed now, which would not be the time to do it with the expectation that it's going to germinate in like May time frame. Like that, I just wouldn't do that. Like it's going to be sitting there. It's not going to germinate. You know, birds may get to it. It's just, it's just why, 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 um, why put the grass seed out, which is expensive. Like good grass seed is expensive. Why put it out and just have it sit on the lawn or in the in the surface of the soil for months without with little to no chance of it germinating when you could just wait until conditions are ideal. So I wouldn't do that, Vahid, if that's what you're asking. And uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. Phyllis, Phyllis, what's going on, Phyllis? It's been a while. She says, happy Friday, Ron and Lauren Connoisseurs. Smash that like button. Looking forward to another excellent live stream. I'll do my best. It's going to be a live stream. Whether it's excellent, you guys have to tell me. But I'll do my best to make it at least fun to uh, to watch. You get, hopefully, I can give you guys a good return on your time, at least from an entertainment perspective, right? We shall see. All right, Jared is up next. He says, uh, Ron, how much of a difference does a, does a front roller really make when it comes to scalping on a bumpy lawn. Let's say leveling my lawn versus just getting a mower with a front roller. Both is better, of course. Excellent question. So the difference between using a front roller and not using a front roller is night and day. It's a huge difference. So let's say you go on out, you bought a real mower and the real mower has caster wheels, right? So you got like the rear drum in the back and you got caster wheels on the front. Whenever one of those wheels goes into a rut or a dip, the the mower is going to behave a lot like a rotary mower behaves, right? The entire the entire reel and bed knife, the entire mower is going to tip and be more prone to 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 go to fall into that dip, which is going to cause scalping issues. Now, compare that to let's say this is your mower, and you say you got a front roller across it. Like this is our mower, right? It's our mower. So you got a front roller here, and you got a rear drum here. Now, if we have a front roller and you take the same mower and we're rolling over, you know, our, our lawn, loving, living our best life, and because we didn't level yet, because you know we just haven't got around to it as yet. We go into a dip in our lawn here. Now, this part of the roller, which is going over the dip, might fall a little bit, but you've got all this left, all this material left, like all this stuff over here that's on solid turf that's going to resist the mower tilting or, or dipping into that low spot. So a front roller, it makes a, a tremendous difference as far as preventing scalping issues in a lawn. It's like a night and day difference. So... If, the, if you're going to buy a real mower, I mean, the only situation where I would see you using not having a front roller on a real mower is, let's say you bought one and your grass is really tall and you're trying to bring it down for the first cut or two using caster wheels so that you don't have the front roller like pushing the grass down so you get a better cut. Like in that case, I could see doing that. For example, Allet, when they sell the Sterling, they offer wheels. They offer caster wheels for to go on the front of it, and that's specifically why they say you would do that. Normally, you would never run that mower with a, a uh, without the front roller. But they're saying if your grass is tall or it's gotten overgrown, that is the condition where you would switch to, to the caster wheels. But as um, as a way of regularly mowing your grass, like you're losing one of the benefits of a real mower by not running a roller on it. Because again, the best way I can explain it is that if you think of the way how a rotary mower works, where you've got like four points of contact, right? It's if any one of those four points is goes into a low spot, the entire disc tilts, right? The entire thing tilts. So you've only got like four small areas that are four small contact patches. Whereas with a real mower that has a rear drum and then also a front, a front roller, you've got this big contact patch in the back 
and you've got this big contact patch in the front. So even if you go over an area that's low, the mower is less, li it's, it's more likely to resist tilting than if you just, if you know, you're running it like in rotary mower mode, which, which would happen if you had, you know, caster wheels on it. So long short of it is if you're gonna buy a real mower, a power real mower, get a roller for it. Like get definitely absolutely invest in a front roller. Like that's one of the best things you can do, especially if you're not gonna level it, right? If you're not gonna level your lawn right away, that's gonna allow you to mow your lawn a bit shorter with much less chance of scalping than you ever could with a rotary mower on the same, at the same height of cut on the same lawn. So hopefully that helps answer your question, Jared. It's a, it's a great question. Long short of it is, um, I, I almost think it should be criminal to sell a real mower a power roller mower anyway, without a front roller. That's how that's how much of a difference a front roller makes. You're really, you're just really, uh, you know, <laughs> you're handicapping yourself if you uh, you go out and you spend all that money on a mower, on a real mower, and you don't put a, uh, a front roller on it. Even if it's a smooth roller. Grooved rollers are ones that I like better, but just any kind of, any roller on the front is going to produce a better cut, especially with the lawn being uneven than a um, using like caster wheels. Cause then you're just getting a mower that's behaving largely, not quite like a rotary, but kind, but kind of like a rotary. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. So hope that helps. Short answer is massive difference, massive difference in cut quality. All right, Gary Kellett Jr. is up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Uh, what's you, oh, I don't know the question. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Um, what's more annoying than watching a wee die in your yard? watching a weed grow in my yard, that would be more annoying. So yes, I, I get it. Like spraying a weed, especially this time of year, it, it'll take a while for herbicides to work, but that's not as bad as seeing weeds in your lawn. So I think the only thing worse than watching a weed slowly die is watching weeds grow in your lawn. Like that would be worse. And then you said leaves and more leaves. Yeah, that this, that's a thing for this time of year. That is a thing. You know, with all the, uh, with people that have a lot of trees on their property, um, you know, if you having having leaves is definitely a, a thing. And that's something to, to talk about. I mean, we, I covered it in the um, the blog post, the, the knowledge base article that I did. I'll post it here in the, in the chat here if I can find it real quick, I'll dig it up. Like one of the things you wanna do as part of your practices for taking care of a lawn in the fall is keeping like leaves off of it. You don't want a lot of leaf buildup on your lawn. Like I mean, you're creating the conditions where you are more likely to have disease problems. Um, you are, um, you know, you're, you're smothering the lawn. It's just, it, it just the grass isn't going to grow as well. There's a ton of reasons to not do that. So, if you have a property that has a lot of trees and those trees are the leaves are falling off them as they tend to happen in the fall, part of your your work for keeping maintaining your lawn this time of year is getting the leaves off of it because it just creates um creates all kinds of problems. And here it is. This is the uh, the guide that's our, our knowledge base article on preparing your lawn for um, for cool for cooler months. So this one right here, uh, winter lawn care, a comprehensive guide to preparing your turf for cooler months. It talks about everything like the nutrients, seeding projects, irrigation, protecting your lawn from diseases. In this section, it talks about keeping leaves and stuff, that kind of debris off your lawn. Um, I'll link this in the chat, but where you can find it, if you guys are so inclined, is if you go to resources, then knowledge base, you will find it here. So there's like four major sections in the knowledge base. There's a seasonal lawn care, how to's, weed and diseases, and then lawn pests. So creepy crawlies that mess up your lawn, which we don't like those either. So in the first section on seasonal lawn care, because it's we're talking about winter, the, the most recent um, knowledge base article is about the guide, contains a guide to preparing your turf for colder months. So if you've not read that, take a look at it. It's free to read, it doesn't cost anything, right? That's definition of free. So go through that and it will, everything from your prepping your irrigation system to your lawn equipment, to the lawn, to nutrients, to soil testing, to all that stuff, everything I can think of that is gonna set you up for a, a nice lawn this time of year and even a better lawn in 2024 is in that article. So feel free to, to give it a look if you uh, you haven't as yet. All right, next is Mr. Gary Freeman. Gary says, uh, Rahe Ron, hashtag Strap Action Gang, happy Friday, enjoying the show. Thank you, Gary, I do appreciate that. It means a lot. You know what I mean? When people don't enjoy the show, it hurts me. It hurts me in a place you guys don't even know I have. It, 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 does, it does bother me when people don't have a good time on the show. So it really means a lot you let me know that I'm getting it right most of the time. All right, next up is Sean 
Murphy, he says, happy Friday, Ron. We are definitely cooling off in Tampa faster than this time last year. Next to no clippings, just now in the GM 1000 after seven days, guess we are winding down, LOL. Yep, that'll do it, man. I mean, the last times that I mowed the lawn, I did it with the outlet, and then I also mowed with the Greensmaster. And think about it, my lawn is 11,500 square feet thereabouts, between 11,500 and 12,000 square feet. And the grass catcher on the Greensmaster, on the Toro mowers is not huge, right? I mowed the entire lawn, the entire property, and it didn't even get halfway full. So the lawn is really slowed down as far as it's growing. And I'm in Northeast Georgia, so in Tampa, it sounds like you guys are getting the cool weather that we got this time of year as well, too, which is causing your lawn to slow down, which is good. It's good, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Enjoy the time off. You know, Enjoy the fact that the lawn is slowed down. You got more time to relax and watch football or do whatever you like to do. Maybe fishing's your thing. Who knows? You know, you got more time to go do something else. So uh, enjoy it while it lasts because springtime will be here before you know it. You have to be out there in the lawn, slaving away, mowing it, fertilizing it, you know, all that, all that work, all that work that we do to keep our lawns looking awesome. All right. No name is up next. He says, Hey Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts, I am missing tonight's show, but let's get those likes up and finish the season strong. I appreciate that. No name. So if you're missing tonight's show, this is not missing the show. If you're missing the show, I, I appreciate the way you're, you're missing the show because you're you're still here even though you're missing the show, which is a great way to miss the show. But I'm just I want to make sure you know when you miss the show, like this is not how you do it. But still, I appreciate the you coming in and you know raising the hit the like button banner. Really do appreciate that. Thanks for all the love and support. And hopefully you're doing something good since you're missing the show tonight. Demarculus Thompson is up. He says greetings, Ron and crew. For the Texas Ranger land. That's right. You guys did win the World Series, right? So yeah, congrats. Congrats to the, uh, you know, Texas Rangers. I think it was so Houston won. The Astros won a couple years back. And then the Rangers won. So that's cool, right? So Texas is uh, is getting it done in baseball, which is pretty sweet. Congrats for that. Because I know we're laying down essential G. However, are we still spraying biospectrum? You can't. I mean, here's the thing. I don't, I don't spray um, any, any, um, any liquids really. What, uh, this really this time of year, um, unless I'm, I'll put, I'll, let me ask the question better. If I'm spraying the carbon kit, so say that we get like a warm snap and the lawn is greening up a little bit and I want to go out and put some micro, some nutrients down, then I'll spray the complete carbon kit. But I would not go out and just spray, ju spray just biospectrum this time of year. Like if your lawn is checked out, I, I honestly just wouldn't bother. I would just do essential G. I would do essential G. I wouldn't bother with, uh, with biospectrum or the carbon kit or really any, any foliar, uh, liquid products, um, and biospectrum unless unless the lawn is actively growing. I just I I don't do it. There's not it's not going to hurt anything, but it's like applying humic acid or applying, you know, applying any kind of foliar product on the lawn when it's dormant. It's just I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, but the stuff's expensive. So why why do it now when in a time when it's not when it's not ideal? The reason why essential G, I don't have a problem with doing it throughout the entire year is cuz the the biochar that's in there really doesn't go away. Um, and you're also with the compost component that's in essential G, you're also just increase the organic material in the soil, which is a good thing. So that's why essential G, if you live somewhere where the soil, where the, the ground doesn't freeze, I'm okay with that. When it comes to the liquids, you really want, you know, there to be, you want, you want the, the grass to be growing. You want there to be, the temperatures to be a bit warmer for there to be some soil, some soil, more microbial activity for you really to get the most value out of it. Again, not going to hurt anything, but why spend the money or why use the product in a, in a time when it's not, you know, it's not ideal for it. My thoughts. There's people that do it all the time, but I mean, I'm just saying, I'm telling you what I do. All right. Next is Jared. He's back. Jared, he says, he says, Ron, it's crazy. I know you're in Georgia, but I'm shocked how similar our temperatures are right now. Um, humidity, not the same. And you get about a month head start, but still surprising me. Yeah. It's just, it's unseasonably co cool this time of year, Jared. Like it's this time last year, it was not this cold. Um, and if this trend holds, we're going to have a very cold winter. So I'm hoping it doesn't, you know, last year's winter was very cold last year's spring. We also got a cold snap. So I'm hoping this, this, this chilly, you know, this, this cold weather snap that we got here kind of, you know, subsides and we get, um, we get, a little more, um, you know, just more, more reasonable weather, like weather that's more in line with what we get this time of year. Actually, let's see what the, what the forecast says. Let us see. Yeah, here we go. See, this is, this is the Georgia weather I know and love. So we had temperatures in the thirties and in the past couple of days. So if we look at the weather forecast, so tomorrow the fourth, it's going to be 72 degrees, a high of 72. Now that's, that's the Georgia fall we know. 
the low 44, 72, 73, 72, 76, 78, and a low 56. So this is what I'm, I'm more used to seeing. So yeah, if this if this holds out, which it looks like it's going to, you know, the dormancy, the the the, the lawn checking out, it might I might get a little taste of green back. It might get a little taste of green back. We'll have to see. But you can see this this is more along the lines of how Georgia winters behave, not this 39 degrees nonsense that we're seeing right now. Like this is this is abnormal for this time of year. All right, next we got Devin. Devin, what's going on, man? Mr. Mr. Newly Married Man. Again, congratulations. He said, what's up, Ron? Did my last spray of the year today. Can't wait for next season. Nice. You know what that means? Since you don't have to spray anymore and you're back, you're married, man. You're, you're back from honeymoon. We got to get you on the show, man. We got to plan some time to get you on the uh, on the live stream. It's a slow time of year. You can sit down. You can put your sweater on. Sit down with a, you know, a cup of eggnog, assuming you drink eggnog and talk about some turf stuff, man. You can tell us what's been going on with the golf course. You can tell regale us with all the tales of the wedding and your honeymoon and all that fun stuff. You know, the folks want to know. Folks want to know. All right, next up is Jacob. Jacob, our CEO, is up next. He says, hey, Ron, St. Augustine in Dallas, Fort Worth. Should I wait to put down the triple four till the spring or apply now? What are the temperatures like where you are, Jacob? The the way to answer this question is this. If, the, if you're still regularly mowing the lawn, you can you could feed it. Um, when it comes to granulars, I did my last one, my last input, the beginning of October. So I'm done with granular fertilizer until 2024. Um, if you're, the temperatures where you are in Dallas are a lot warmer, which I, I kind of doubt it, then you could. Uh, so based on that we're November 3rd, I'm leaning more towards wait till next year, uh, Jacob. That's, uh, that's, that's the advice I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. Again, I don't I haven't looked at the temperatures in like you know what we can I've got I've got weather I've got the weather channel right here. We can look at what Dallas, Texas is. It says Dallas, Fort Worth. And Dallas, Texas. It is oh wow, you guys are a lot warmer than us. Okay, yeah. So so um so yeah, in your case, you're still in the 70s, man. 70 some days in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, if you're still if you're still out there mowing, man, I mean it's gonna start cooling off here soon. But if you if you want to apply that, um I wouldn't feel as bad about it as I would in Georgia because you guys are definitely, you guys are definitely warmer than uh, than we are. Ultimately, your your call, you know, if it had been if we were having this conversation a month ago, I'd say yeah, absolutely go for it. But we're in the November now, you know what I mean? So even in your case, like the the temps are trending cooler. Like you're going to be in the 60s in a week or so. So I mean, I don't know, man. It's it's really it's really your call. If you want to wait till next year, you can. The thing is. Your lawn's going to start checking out. It's going to start slowing down and going dormant. So why even, you know, if, if anything, just wait till next year. That, the more I think about it, that, that's, that's something to go with. Final answer. Wait till uh, wait till next year. If you want to do something on your lawn, you want to apply something, go out and get a bag of Essential G and apply that. Like that, I have no, you know, no reservations of you applying that this time of year. But your fertilizer, I'd, I'd want it to be uh, a bit warmer and consistently warmer for you to do that, for to get the most out of it. All right, Charles Westmoreland is up. He says, let's get those likes up. Let's do that, guys. If you guys have not been hitting the like button, shame on you. You know, we've got uh, 93 people here and we've only got, well, 70 likes. It's not bad. Yeah. Not bad, but we can do better. We can certainly do better. So if you've just joined the show and you've not hit the like button, you're hurting my feelings, please hit the like button. It's free for you guys to do that. All right, coming over here on the Instagram, Robert Rainey's up next. He says, good evening. What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate all the love and support. Uh, Offered NV says, you have the best lawn talk. I really do appreciate that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Offered NV and Robert Rainey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Checkerboard and Diamond Stripes is on the gram supporting us over there as well, too. Next, we got Archie Amos. He says, evening, young man. I was going to read Archie's comments that way because I imagine that's how he would say it. He says, evening, young man. Will you or the companies you support be offering any sales allowing us to stock up over the winter? Yeah, so I'm, I'm working on that, um, Archie. Um, the thing is, there's not, there's honestly, there's not a ton of margin in, in this stuff. But if I decide to run something for Black Friday, it's going to be, I mean, it's not going to be, um, an extended period. It's not going to be like a week long thing. And it's likely going to be for a few days. So I am, I am looking into doing that. Um, and I will let you guys know what I decide on by next week's live stream. How about that? How does that work? It'll, next week will be the 10th. I'll be able to tell you guys what the plans are uh, for then. If we're going to, what, what we're planning to do, and then you'll have to, 
you know, as we get close to the week of um, Thanksgiving, that's that's when it will be. If we do it, that's when it's going to be. So we are um, we are looking into that, Archie. Give you guys a chance to pick up pick up some goods, that good stuff until uh, you know stock up for next year. All right, next up is Larry. Larry says, "Hey, Ron, will I need some kind of fertilizer when using the 901C carbon kit?" No, not really, Larry, because 901C is a fertilizer. It's got nine percent nitrogen in it and 1% uh, potassium, you don't, it, it stands by itself. You don't really need to use, especially this time of year. If you're spraying like a liquid fertilizer on your cool season lawn and you wanna go, you wanna stick with liquids, then you can just go with that. If you want to go, if you wanna use a granular as well, so say you've got a cool season lawn, which you do, and I don't remember, you do have a cool season lawn. If you want to do some spoon feeding, you could do something like the, uh, like the Stress 12024. So I'll show you here really quick. That is the wrong one. Yep, so if you if you want to do a granular along with it on a cool season lawn, uh, you could go with, go to shop, go to lawn fertilizer and something like this. The, the 12024, I would pair this along with the 901C carbon kit. Like this is the one that I would I would roll with if you want to, if you want to use a granular product in addition to liquid. I know when you email me earlier this evening, um, you said you were leaning more towards liquids. And if that's the case, the 901C carbon kit is what I would go with because you've got you got a fertilizer product, you've got a micronized carbon product in release 901C, you got a kelp product in the Nutri Kelp, and then you've also got Biospectrum. So you're all set. For any of you guys that are wondering what we're talking about, in case you're not familiar with it, so what I recommended to Larry earlier, if you go to shop and then lawn fertilizer is this. It's the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit. It's a um, a bundle that I put together with Miramichi Green that contains, comes in two different types. There's one, there's a really zero kit, which is the version that does not have fertilizer in it and is it assumes that you're gonna be applying using your, your fertilizer of choice. So you gotta look at fertilizer you already like, you would use a release zero kit. In Larry's case, he was looking for one liquid per, um, you know, product to, to rule them all. So I told him go with the 901C kit, in which case you get a 9% nitrogen, 1% potassium product fertilizer. You get NutriKelp and you get Biospectrum. So this is um, is what I'm talking about. So I would pair this along with Stress 12024, uh, Larry. Given that you have a cool season lawn, you're still got growing season left, you're still mowing it. You wanna, you wanna put out a fertilizer, a granular in addition to your liquid, then you can absolutely do that. I would not do that on a cool on a warm season lawn, but in your case, that you got cool season grass and you're still, you know, your, your lawn is still going strong, feel free to keep feeding it. And I will send you a link to that. You can probably find it underneath this video if you're watching it on YouTube, but you know what? I wanna make it even easier for you. I'm gonna say, you know what? For Larry, here is a granular fertilizer. That one. There you go. So you're all set. All right, next up is Mr. Oliver Rittum. He says, happy Friday, 2023 C. <laughs> I'll start over. Happy Friday. The 2023 season has been a success thanks to Ron's live streams. It's partially true, and your hard work. Temps were in the 30s this week and climb back up to the 80s mid next week. A little bit of Nutrizolve left. I may finish it up. So yeah, so Oliver is some of the pictures that I want to show you guys tonight. Because if you guys want to say, hey, you know, it, my lawn does not look like a lot of the lawns that I see on the live stream. What could I expect? Like how much, how much could you transform a lawn over the course of a season with a good program and consistent work? So Oliver sent me some pictures earlier and I wanna show you guys them now. So this is how his lawn looked at the beginning of, this, beginning of uh, 2023. You can see some of his neighbor's lawns, they're more green than he is. He's got some, uh, he's got some struggles. You know what I mean? You know, life, life is not looking great on Oliver's lawn uh, right now, you know, I mean, if we look at that. There's, there's some, there's some challenges there. I mean, I've, I've seen worse, but I've definitely, I've definitely seen a lot better. But with consistent work, this is his lawn now at the end of the season. So this is where he was the beginning of the season, and this is what he looks like now. So that's a close up of the turf. You can see it's the same, same lawn. You see the mailbox in the background, and there it is. There, so it's the same lawn. Another picture of it. That's looking, man. That color looks so good. Looking tight, man. Really, really nice. This is in the fall. You see he's got leaves on his lawn from uh, from fall weather and a close-up, the obligatory close-up shot to show how nice and tight and clean, how, how fresh and clean, clean that lawn is. Looking good, man. Awesome. So awesome work. So from, so from this to that in a season is pretty awesome. So again, glad to clap it up for you, um, Oliver. 
great work. And yes, I mean, I'm I'm happy to play a small part in helping you get get your lawn where it is. But really, it's a consistency, man. Because there's like you watching the live stream every week is not going to get your lawn better unless you actually do this stuff. So you obviously did it. You you put the work in. You were consistent. I know you and I email back and forth throughout the season when you had questions about things, and you just were consistent with it. And that's why your lawn looks like this. And and here's the thing, guys. If you do like the 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 few steps that it really takes, right? I mean, if you want to break down getting a great lawn in in its it's the most simplest components, right? As simple as I can make it. It is this. So we just click on shop. It is this infographic right here. So the first thing is to get rid of weeds because we don't like weeds in our lawns. We're just vain like that, right? No weeds. Weeds are a bad thing. Let's so get rid of weeds by using a selective herbicide that is safe for your particular grass type. Then step two, do a soil test. This is super important. It's like the best $30 you'll spend in your lawn care program because it literally gives you the answers to the question, what fertilizer should I be using on my lawn? What nutrient program should I be using? Do I need to adjust my soil pH? Like these are things that, you know, even the best of us can't figure out without the data. And this is gonna get that for you, 30 bucks, super cheap. And then once you have your soil test results, you're gonna fertilize the lawn based on the soil test results. So you can see how that works. Thing one, you went to the doctor, they read a bunch of studies, did the blood work. They said, hey, Mr. Henry, this was going on with your lawn. This was going on with your body. We need you to, you know, to, to cut down on the Chick-fil-A lemonade. Your sugar levels are getting a little bit high. We need to work out more. You know, do all these types of stuff. It's going to give me, it's going to give me a, a treatment program, and which is going to come in the form of your fertilizer and biostimulants. And then once you do these things, eliminate weeds, do a soil test, fertilize your lawn, all that's really left and is a thing that most people do not do consistently because it's the most work. And that is the mow, mow, and mow some more step, which is step four. And if you do this, you get rid of the weeds, you soil test, you fertilize your lawn based on the soil test results, and then you mow your lawn at least twice a week if you're really serious about getting an amazing sand of turf. You can't help, even if you don't want to, even if you don't want to, you can't help but get a lawn that looks like this. You just really can't, even if you don't want it, even if you don't want it, if you, you feed your lawn based on soil test data, you mow your lawn twice a week, even if you say, you know what, I wanna have the ugliest lawn in the neighborhood, it's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna end up with you can end up somewhere between where your lawn is now and a lawn that looks like this. Somewhere in between there. Maybe it looks as good as that, maybe it looks better than that, but it will absolutely not look as bad as it looked at the beginning of the season if you're consistent and just do those steps. And that the thing that again, the thing that most people don't do the most of, it's really important, is mowing. You know, mowing your lawn regularly with sharp equipment is one of the, the best, the biggest differentiators between a regular looking lawn and a golf course quality lawn. So thank you so much for sending the pictures, Oliver. You gave me a fun talking point to share, some motivation for the folks that are thinking, you know what, I can't do that. My lawn can't look that great because you went honestly from, I mean, it was looking kind of rough, you know? I mean, this is this is one, this is one level away from, um, you know, probably house association letter note and then to uh, to this. So great, great stuff, man, man. You know the thing about this? I think you got like Tiffway 419, don't you, Oliver? I believe that's, I mean, you, if you're still here, let us know in the chat what kind of grass you have. Because, you know, here's the thing. A lot of you guys want to bag on Tiffway, you know? And here's the thing. I've been part of that camp. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, don't don't throw stones in a glass house, right? I've been part of that camp saying, yeah, Tiffway, man, whatever. It's like the same, you know, everyone's got Tiffway, whatever. But I mean, this looks, this is, the color looks so good, man. Wow. Awesome. Awesome turf. All right, next up is Adam. Adam is in the house. He says... Well, I believe I tilled up the soil when I put down the Xeon Zoysia. I screwed up the soil and the pH went from 6.5 to 4.9. And I just got through putting down 100 pounds of lime and water. That's a lot of lime, man. I normally don't, I mean, I don't, it depends on how many, how much, actually it's a lot of lime, but it might not be that much. It depends on what, um, how big your lawn is. So if you're trying to remediate an acidic soil, I like to do applications between 20 to 40 pounds. So on the higher end, like 40 pounds per thousand. So if you got a 2,000 square foot lawn or 3,000 square foot lawn, then that's uh, pretty decent. That's you know somewhere between 20 to 40 pounds per thousand. So that's that's okay. Now if you got a thousand square foot lawn, that's a lot. That's too much. It's, it's a, that's that's a bit a bit heavy handed. So depending on the size of your lawn, Adam, you got it. You got it right. You got it right. So um, but it's it's interesting because for your pH to, to have dropped. I mean, that's, are you sure? Because that's, that's a, that's a pretty big, uh, it's a pretty big swing from 6.5 to 4.9. That's a pretty, it's a pretty big swing. But at, at any rate, the lime application you did is going to help, you know, raise the, uh, the soil pH. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. That's a pretty big, pretty big swing from just tilling, you know, just from tilling the soil. So, 
All right, uh, LXRD, Larry's up. He says, don't forget to click the like button so Ron doesn't get sad. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Larry. See, that, that, I, that means something to me. You know, you care about my happiness. I'm just not here. I'm just not like the lawn care bot just brought to you here every Friday night. You just wind me up, feed me some like, you know, some an Arnold Palmer, and I just answer lawn care questions until I fall asleep. You actually care about my happiness, which means something. Appreciate that. All right, Matthew Berge is up next. He says, hey, Ron, when you vertica and turf rake, do you go in both directions each time you do it, or do you alternate directions every other time? I alternate. So I'll vertic when I verticut, like say in May, um, I'm trying to think of which way I did it when I verticut in May. Wait, at any rate, I will I'll do one where I verticut away from the house, like you know, like uh, I don't have any picture, good pictures of the lawn. I don't have any good pictures of the lawn right now. That looks kind of it looks kind of cruddy right now, but let me see if I can find a video of the back lawn when it looks decent um uh, this is a turf raking yeah oh here we go boom okay yeah so i will verticut and turf rake the lawn in the way you are seeing the stripes now right so i'll do it like this and then the next time the next time when i turf rake i will alternate to um lengthwise lengthwise so i'll do like two way to and from the house for one go, and the next time I, I turf rake, I will go lengthwise, and the same holds true for verticutting. So if I verticut going away from the house, I will verticut the uh, I'll verticut lengthwise the next time. So uh, so yeah, I mean there's times when I'm really feeling crazy, and I'll do I'll verticut in both directions. I'll just I'll raise the verticut up a little bit more to where it's like six mil six mil above the surface, and I'll make passes in two directions. I normally do that. Um, just when I'm, you know, I'm bored and I just, I got, I just, I've, I've got nothing else, nothing better to do. But for the most part, it's, I alternate one and then the other, especially with turf raking, because verticutting is once per month, turf raking is once a week. And I, that each time I, I go back and forth, that way I can really burn the stripes. And that's how they look like this, this video I actually got it named is turf raking. So this is what it looks like literally right after turf raking. And you can see how pronounced the stripes are, like how, how well they're defined. You know, that's not from fertilizer. That's not from an iron application. That is from keeping debris like trash getting all the trash out of the lawn all the dead material out of the lawn and literally combing the grass in in the direction that i want the stripes to be in so that's that's how you get turf that looks like that and for those of you guys that follow the channel for a long time you guys have probably looked at it for years and years and years and it's never looked like how it looks like last year and this season until i started incorporating regular turf raking and verticutting. cutting so if you don't believe that it works, look at my lawn from like 2021 and then look at it from 2022 onward and you will see the difference for yourself. Okay, uh, next up, Jared George says, uh, next year, if I wanted to put annual rye down to, to have a green winter, how difficult is it to get my Bermuda back in the spring? How do you make sure the winter grass doesn't interfere? Yeah, so first of all, if you're gonna do a rye grass, I would not do annual rye. Annual rye is not, I don't think it's very pretty. It looks almost like a weed in my opinion. Sorry if you got an annual rye grass lawn, anybody that's watching, but I just think perennial rye looks a lot better. So if you're going to overseed your Bermuda in the fall to get a green lawn over the winter months, you would use a perennial rye grass and not, uh, not annual rye. What that means is whenever springtime rolls around, so when the Bermuda begins waking up, so like April, March, April timeframe, depending on where when temps get warmer in your area, you're gonna wanna use a selective herbicide like Celsius, pair it with a surfactant, and then this will get rid of the ryegrass while allowing the Bermuda to be just fine. Allow the Bermuda to wake up and and uh, and come out of dormancy and do its thing. So you, if you decide to do that, Jared, you are gonna want to apply, um, plan for getting rid of the ryegrass in the spring. If you don't do that, the Bermuda is not gonna come out well and the ryegrass like in June is gonna look like garbage. So the, you end up with a lawn that looks really, really bad if you allow the ryegrass just to run its course. You absolutely wanna get rid of it in the springtime and the time to do that, at least in here in Georgia, is like a late March, April timeframe where you are in the country, as your lawn begins to wake up is when you're gonna want to, uh, to take care of that. So hope that helps. But uh, but don't do annual ryegrass. Use a perennial rye, don't use annual. It doesn't, again, I don't think it looks good. Some, I mean, I, and you know, it's, it's funny. You hear most people when they oversee their lawns, they don't do, they don't do annual. I mean, go, go get on, on, uh, on Google, like go to Google image search, like images.google.com and search like annual ryegrass and then search perennial ryegrass and you'll see the difference. Like annual ryegrass just does not 
doesn't look um, doesn't look that great in my opinion. So uh, so that so there you go. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Adam says, I hope it's not going to be like it was two years ago when I had Tiff Tough Bermuda and I had to put down over 200 pounds of lime to get the pH to 6.5 from, from a 3.9. Man, your buffer, your buffer pH has got to be low, Adam. That's that's crazy that it's that the lawn, that your soil tries to to get that acidic. Um, it might be it might be that your soil is just, you have just very acidic soil in which your case, and if that's the case for you, every year it's just gonna be a heavy lime application, which is the case for some folks, right? Some people have like highly alkaline soil and they're always putting, having to put sulfur in to kind of bring the, the levels down. In your case, you may have a soil that is just naturally just more acidic, in which case you're gonna have to you continually make lime applications to uh, to get it up. And in my case, for example, like this year, I'm not doing a lime application. Like my, my lime is like dead nuts. It's like mid sixes, it's looking great. So I'm not gonna do a lime application this um, this winter. Uh, but it sounds like that's not going to be something for you. So like your your soil really wants to be more acidic. So uh, so yeah, lime regular lime apps is going to be the thing for uh, for you. All right, um, JS Maddox is in the house. Alan Herman's in the house here on the gram. Next up, we got Gerald Jennings. He says. Ron, I saw some of your videos from five years ago. You have made a lot of progress. You should be proud. Your equipment upgrades didn't hurt. Yeah, man, I've, I've learned a lot in the past five years. And yes, the equipment upgrades didn't hurt. But I mean, it's really just just playing with it, playing with uh, with um, different programs, different nutrient strategies, learning a lot, talking to a lot of friends that I have in industry, uh, you know, giving me ideas of, of different ways of running my, uh, my my program. And yeah, it's just, just sticking with it, right? It's, if you care about something, if you care about something and you consistently work on it, it's hard to not get better at it, right? If you just do something over and over and over and you don't really care, then yeah, you'll just stay bad. But if you if you actually care about it and you really want to get better, and especially when you're making content and you're trying to share the little bit of knowledge that you have with other people, that's that's additional motivation to get better at it and get better at, at, at your craft, right? So yeah, the lawn, you're right, five years ago to now is night and day difference. Really, in my opinion, the lawn from last year, if you look at the lawn from like 2021, to now, it's a it's a huge it's been a huge leap, huge difference in in the way the lawn looks, and that's largely due to cultural practices. The nutrient program has gotten better. I've I've been playing with spoon feeding more, and also with um with my growth regulator apps like that. That has helped too, but it's just um just consistently working on it, man. Consistently sticking with it is what is what's done that. So appreciate your um your thoughts, uh, your, your kind, the kind words, Gerald. Thank you so much for um for watching. Uh, Robert Majoros is up next. He says, it's been a while. Hope all's uh, doing great. So my turf got out of hand this season. Backyard Xeon is two to three, I guess you're two to three inches. I hear you, Robert. Yeah, it's been a while. We haven't seen you on, on the live stream, but whatever, dude, it's whatever. It got two to three inches. You know, you're, you're, you're here now. It will only get better as you begin, um, as you begin working on it, you know, then when next season's kicks off, I mean, again, two to three inches is really not that big a deal. Like a, a lot of lawns are way taller than that. So if you're at three inches, I really wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it too much. You're, uh, you're good. You're good to go. Nothing to, nothing to worry about. That's the good, beautiful thing about grass, right? You can always, it always gives you opportunities to intelligently begin again, right? If you make a mistake or if there's something, you know, life gets in the way, grass will be there. It'll be, it'll be just fine. I wouldn't, wouldn't sweat it too much. All right, uh, next up, uh, he says, I know we love stripes, but purely health speaking and not visual, is it okay to mow all in, in all directions every time? So you want a complete solid look? You could, you could. I mean, to do to do what you're talking about. So say you want the lawn to be all one color without stripes, it's gonna mean making all your passes in the same direction. So it's gonna take you longer because you're gonna have to, like if this is, for example, if this is your lawn and you make a pass down and then up and then down and up like this, that's how you get stripes, right? But if you want, say, the lawn to be consistently like the darker shade, right? And um, like this is where you're gonna be watching, looking at the lawn from. So this is where you're gonna be looking at the lawn and you want the lawn to be darker in color. So in that case, if you're watching, looking at the lawn from this point, you're gonna wanna take your mower down here and mow a stripe this, mow a pass this way and then come back and then mow another pass this way and then back and then another pass this way and then back and then. So you know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to be, you're gonna have to be going back and, and, and pretty much making all your cutting passes in the same direction if you want the lawn to be 
um, all in one color. If you ever watch like how they cut the, the fairways of the masters, that's pretty much what they do, right? They just start and all the mowers just all start running down, going down the fairway and they all, they're all cutting the grass all in one direction, which is why you don't really see stripes on the fairways at Augusta National because it's a, the, they're all cut, they're cut, they're cut exactly how you're talking about. They're all cut in, in one, in a, in one direction. Um, but with, if you're doing it, but they can do that because they got, you know, a bunch, they got a bunch of triplexes all doing it all at once. If you're, um, if you are, if you want to do that on your lawn, Jared, it's just going to take longer. You can do it, but it's going to take longer. So, um, so I've just never done that. Plus I like stripes. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. All right. LG, we've already got that. Next is James Kelly. He says, um, I went a little heavy with iron and now my Kentucky bluegrass has purple tint to it. <laughs> it said that I should not add water to try and leach it out. Should I add lime? I don't want to mess with my pH. What do you think? I think you just leave it alone. I think you let time run its course. That's what you do, James. Just nothing. Don't like it. Don't do anything. Just let, let time run its course and the color will go back to, uh, will go back to normal. And you know, next time not to go super heavy with your iron app because it causes your lawn the turn really really dark green looks an awesome and then it goes from that to like what you're talking about a purplish like a, a i don't, don't want to say black but like a dark, a dark like almost like a purplish color gray gray purplish color so uh but yeah it'll it'll cycle out of that so just don't uh i wouldn't i wouldn't try to do anything to correct it i would not go do a lineup i wouldn't do anything else i would just just let time run its course and it will it will be just fine uh robert he says, hey, y'all, it's been a, a while. Hope all is well. So the turf got out of hand this season. Zeon got to five inches. Wow. And I've been cutting it down to about two to three inches. Should I leave it for winter or scalp to 0.75? Thanks. I would leave it at two to three inches, um, Robert, and then just save your scalp for next year. I mean, I wouldn't, this is not the time of year to make big changes to the height of cut. If you were already at 0.75 inches, you know, that's where you're maintaining the lawn all year, all season long, and you wanted to leave it at that height going into the the winter, I'd be okay with that. But I wouldn't go through and take, you know, two, two and a quarter inches of material off the lawn now. One, it's a ton of work and it's just, um, I, I would just wait till springtime whenever you're, you're looking, when the lawn is going to start, start growing. You know what I mean? Like right now is just, is not the time to make major height of cut changes. And you did good, right? You're at five inches, you're down to two inches. That's not bad. Just let it, just roll with it. Just let it sit there until, uh, until next year. If it were me, I would not do that. I would not cut the lawn down to 0.75 inches this time of year. Tom V's up next is Devin. Since you are cool season grass, can you describe what you're applying now? You mentioned last spray. Is this spoon feeding? Uh, if he's here, I'm sure he'll answer it, but I don't know because he's not in the live stream to be able for me to, be able to tell you what he's, uh, what he's spraying. Uh, raging, <laughs> raging Wookie, um, eating a cookie <laughs> says, Hey Ron, what are your thoughts on the new California trimmer catalyst models coming out next year? Um, it'd be cool to see them once they once they're actually released, when they get in the hands of people and see what they what they think. I think I, I, that's the one that I believe is an interchangeable cartridge system, all right. So if that's if I'm thinking about the right mower, I think of the one you're, that you're mentioning. Um, yeah, it looks like a cool a cool setup. We'll have to see whenever people get them and start cutting with them how they how it does. I mean, more options are always always a good thing in the market, right? So uh, so yeah, um, I've not touched one myself. I've not seen one myself, but uh, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Alex Zamora is up next. He says, Hey Ron, my front lawn has a pH of 4.9. Have you ever used liquid lime? I have not. This is granular takes six to eight months to work. No, it doesn't. It doesn't take that long. Uh, Southern California, Bermuda. How much do I apply? Uh, so I would do, I would do a granular um, it doesn't take six months to work. It takes, um, you can actually see a change in about three months. So I wonder if I can, I can do this, if I can find it. Uh, if I can find my soil test results from a couple years back, because I did an app in, I can show you that. I can actually prove to you that it doesn't take that long to work. Um, I think it was 2021. I think it was 2021 is when I did that. Let's see, we can compare reports, I think so. Let's uh, see if I can do this live with you guys. All right, so we want to compare da, 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 um, fall of 2021 and um, I think it's summer of 2021. I think it's these three. I think. I think this is it. Yep, this is. these are them. Yeah. So if you guys look at my channel, you'll see from a video uh, in 2021 on soil pH. It's going to be 
one with my my face and then showing the soil. I'm just going to pick a, like a, a chart. I'll, I'll link it here in the chat if I can find it. So you can see this soil test was pulled in June. And this is here in October. So four, did you say June, June, July, August, September. So four months. So four months later, um, you can see the difference in pH. So this is a, um, this is where my soil pH was. And this is what it did just over the course of, th you know, three to four months. That's uh, that's a difference. So it doesn't take six to eight months to see uh, a difference in, um, in soil pH. As far as lime application. I want to say I did like 30 pounds per thousand, I believe. Don't hold me to that, but I think so. In the video that I'll, I'll link to you guys, I'll show you what I did. But this is this shows you like this is the date and this is the date and that's the change. And that was from like a, I want to say, it's either tw 20 to 30 pounds per thousand is what I did. Let me see if I can find the video. I'll link it here in the chat for you, Alex. Um, and you'll be able to see, yep, here it is, found it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, for 2021, this is it. So this video from a couple of years back is all about soil pH and adjusting it. And you'll it'll talk about calcitic lime and dolomitic lime. So you can choose the right lime based on what your soil test results say. And lime, I'll say call it pH, uh, just, adjust, adjustment video. There we go. Yeah, so watch that. If you watch it now, you can watch it after the show. But the long truth of it is I just showed you with my my results that it doesn't take that long. It doesn't take six to eight months for you to see a movement in soil pH. And here's the thing. I just pulled samples, you know, the, in this in this interval. If I had done it like in September or late August, I probably would have seen some movement as well. I just It's just, it's just the interval when I did them, when I pulled them. Um, so it could be even sooner than that, you know? So I, I, I mean, won't we'll know because I didn't, I didn't do them sooner, but... Uh, but my point is that it doesn't take eight months for you to see um, for the lime to react with the soil and for you to see a, a boost in, in soil pH levels. You got a video there and you've actually got the results, which you just saw. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see what else we have here. Um, we got Jared making considerations about uh, his lawn. I got you. Sounds like that. Um, his kids might enjoy some some softer, bushier, cool season to run around on, I guess. Bermuda's nice, man. Don't don't be talking, throwing shade on Bermuda grass. There's nothing wrong with Bermuda. Bermuda's soft and and cushy to run around on. Come on. I think Jerry, I think you just want to work on your lawn. I think you just want like another project is what I think is what what's really going on here. Will Covey says, "What are your thoughts on mulching versus bagging leaves? There are lots of leaves falling right now, and I'm running out of space to put the leaves. I would get the majority of the leaves up, Will." So whenever the, the leaves fall off the tree, whenever like there's been a, a lot of buildup, I would get that off. If you've got a light amount of leaves, like a, a, a small amount, that is when mulching I'd be okay with. But if your entire lawn is covered in leaves where you can't even see the grass, I would not mulch that. I would get that off the lawn. So once you once the, the, the leaves have gone, once the trees have gone through um, a couple cycles of shedding um, to where whenever you go out to mow, it's just there's... A, a light, like a sprinkling of leaves here and there, that's cool to mulch, but I wouldn't, um, again, if the lawn is covered in leaves, I would not mulch that. I would I would get them off the lawn. I really I really wouldn't do that. I wouldn't mulch them back in. So I uh, so hope that helps. I would not do that. I mean, I know it's kind of a sub, uh, kind of a subjective answer, um, but what, uh, you know what, if we look at Oliver's lawn, there's a picture, I think he's got a picture of showing leaves on his lawn. Let me see. I think one of these, yeah, so if, you, if you're like that, you mulch it. Like I wouldn't go get that off, but there's another one where he shows it's even a little bit heavier, I think. Um, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. I thought I should have. Oh, you know what? It wasn't him. It was, um, it was Ted. That's whose it was. It wasn't, it wasn't Oliver. It was this one. So like, if you're, if it looks like that, I would not mulch that. Like if you, if it looks like that, I would not mulch those. I would get, I would get, get that off the lawn. I would not mulch that into the, into the, the uh, back into the soil. I would get those off. So that gives you an idea. If it's um, if it's like towards, if we're looking at this, if it's like towards like the two o'clock position where you've got you've got plenty of grass showing through, but you've got a, you know some leaves here and there, like that would be fine. But I would not like what's under that tree. I would not would not run over all that with a mower. I would absolutely get that stuff off the lawn. I would not mulch that back in. So that, thank you, Ted. So you see your lawn's like an example. Um, so yeah. So hope that helps, Will. The uh, the example of what of what not of what to do and. You can, um, yeah, I know it's, I know it's kind of a problem. You know, it's funny it, this time of year, 
uh, the like one of my buddies that owns a lawn um, lawn care service, lawn, lawn care service. He says that this time of year, uh, leaves are actually like even he says even throughout the entire season, leaves are more work for them than mowing. Like whenever they go out to to like a, a property that they're maintaining, like the mowing part's not hard because they just they mow it and they mulch the clippings back in. But the leaves, people want the leaves gone, so it's just a, a lot of headache. It takes a lot of time to blow all the leaves, collect them, bag them up, and take them out. So. I, I'm with you. I hear what you're saying as far as it being um, a lot of work, but it's uh, but I, I I wouldn't if it looks like this, I would not mulch what's under those trees back into the lawn. I wouldn't I would not do that. I would get rid of them. All right. Next up is Jimmy Crack Corn. <laughs> he says, uh, "Let's see here." He says, "Hey, hello, good sir. Uh, should I have any concern about putting down a lawn insect control?" granular on a six-ish week old cool season lawn mix over in Augusta, Georgia. No, not really. As long, just stick to the right rates. As long as you stick to the rates for the for the product, uh, Jimmy. Um, insecticides, fungicides, I don't have a ton of concern about that on new grass. It's really herbicides you really got to be careful with. So herbicides on new grass, that's where you can, you the potential for you causing injury is a lot higher. Insecticides and fungicides, as long as you stick to the to the label rates, there's not there's not a lot of um a lot of risk with, with you causing damage or injury to the lawn. Insecticide, even less so than uh, than a fungicide. So yeah, if you want to do that, if you feel a need to apply an insecticide this time of year, uh, then then uh, by all means go for it. Just make sure you stick to the label rates and you should be just fine. Appreciate the question. All right, next we have CS. CS, he says, thanks for all the information you provide. I've saved several of your videos and they've been instrumental to my lawn progress this past summer. Awesome. Happy to hear that. Happy to hear the content is useful. Um, you know, the thing is I've got a pretty good library of content. You guys will notice like this, this past season, like uh, I, I've made, I made less, I did a lot of the live streams obviously every week and also um, you, a lot more YouTube shorts to help answer like just like questions like this, like, like the previous questions, like small snippets. Um, but I've got a pretty good library that covers the majority of the questions that people ask when it comes to like showing stuff, right? Like saying, hey, how do I mix up herbicides and spray them on my lawn? Like I've got the Celsius certainty video, shows you in detail how to mix it, how to spray it, all this stuff, right? So um, I'm glad that you guys are still getting a lot of value out of them. And the, the nice thing about lawn care videos, the content, right? For the most part that it's like, even if you look at a video that's a year or two or three years old, it's still valuable, right? Like grass, like how you take care of grass really doesn't change that much from um, from year to year. I mean, products can change, but the the process doesn't. You know, it's not like it, it's a it's a huge swing from uh, from year to year. So I'm glad to hear that CS. I'm happy to hear that your lawn is better for having found the YouTube channel. And if you have any ideas for content or something that I'm missing that I should make some content on, feel free to let me know, and I'll do my best to help you out. All right, uh, Jared uh, George says, Ron, is the best answer about front rollers, Ron, that is the best answer about front rollers I've ever heard. Wow, thank you. Okay, so my crazy brain immediately starts thinking how I could put a front roller on my rotary or old push reel, LOL. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, been, it's been done, it's been done. Uh, there are people, so what I've seen are rotaries, there are rotaries that have rear drums that propel them. So they have the front, they have the two front wheels and they have the rear drum. You know, I think Alan actually makes one. I can show you one. Uh, it's in their pro, their pro mowers. Like, uh, yeah, like this one here, like the uplift. This is a rotary mower that has, it's propelled by a rear drum. So I can get a picture of the back. So there you go, as you can see, she's got a rear drum on the back and wheels on the front. And while this is not as good, while not as good as having a rear drum and a front roller, it's still better than having uh, four wheels. Because even though you don't have, you know, the front the front roller and the rear drum, that rear drum is still also going to, even if you have like the, just the two front wheels, having that, that rear drum across the back is still going to resist the mower tilting or dropping into low areas of the lawn better, much better than you having like four points, like four, like like most mowers are, right? You have just four wheels. Like that is um, the worst, it's gonna produce the most scalping in a lawn that's uneven. Whereas like the mower I just showed you, the one from Allet with the rear drum, the rear drum in the back and then two wheels here, like that's kind of an in-between because again, that rear roller, much of the weight of the mower is, is spread across that. So it's not gonna be quite as good but it's still better than four wheels. And then the best is front roller, rear drum. That's gonna, that's really gonna 
you know, as far as like scalping, you're going to be able to cut much lower with less chance of scalping the turf with uh, with that. For just, just physics, right? It just makes sense. Like, you, like the weight is literally supported. Like more of the, mo the, the weight of the mower is spread over a larger area. So when one one area, one small area becomes unsupportive, it affects the like the, the attitude of the mower less. So it just makes sense if you think about it. All right. Uh, he says, Ron, thanks again for putting up with this rookie's constant string of questions. LOL. Yeah, no worries, man. I mean, here's the thing, Jared. If you have the question, someone else likely has it, right? And if, and if, not, if someone in this live stream doesn't have it, someone that watches it at a later point might have it. So it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. We all start from somewhere. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know, but, but the little bit that I do know, I'm happy to, you know, happy to share share with you guys. So don't it's you don't look at it as like you're only helping yourself. There's other people that have the same question. They're just like, eh, it's kind of a stupid question. I don't want to answer it, but it's not really a stupid question. It's an important question because whenever you go out and you buy a mower, you can think, hmm, should I invest, you know, the 200 bucks or whatever they cost these days to put a front roller on it? Now you know the benefits of doing that. So in my opinion, yes, if you're going to buy a real mower, I almost think if you could put a, if they sell, like manufacturers should not sell real mowers or at least power real mowers anyway, without front rollers on them. Like they should, like the, the caster wheels should be an option. Like the front roller should come standard. Like you should not have to go out and spend extra money to get, um, to get a, a front roller on a powered real mower because you're just like, it's one of the best, most important parts of the, uh, of the, 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 the equipment. All right. Uh, L John. John L or John E L, um, your question is not complete. It says, Ron, how to get the best out of, and you didn't say anything else. So I'm going to keep scrolling and hopefully I see the best, the rest of your answer, the rest of your question rather. All right. Uh, Garrett Snitcher, he says, it's a good question. He says, Hey, Ron, what is the best time to do soil samples? I live in Wichita, Kansas, zone 6B. I was going to do a sample in April, but wondering if I do one now, would it benefit me? So I'm a fan of doing soil tests twice per year, Garrett, and here's why. Doing one at the beginning of the season, March, April timeframe, like what you're talking about, is good because it gives you the most recent data to determine your nutrient program for that season. So if you're trying to figure out what fertilizer should I be using you know, on my lawn throughout this growing season, getting a soil test done in March, April timeframe is a great way to get the information to answer that question. Doing one in the fall is the second time when I like to do soil testing. The reason why is for two, twofold. The first is to measure the effectiveness of your nutrient program. So you started, you know, feeding your lawn based on the soil test results that you got in say March. And then when you do, a, when you pull cores again in like September, October timeframe, you're able to see, hey, based on where my soil was earlier this year, how did it change based on all the fertilizer and the other products that I applied to the lawn over the course of the season? Additionally, the fall soil test is going to allow you to see what the current soil pH is. So if the pH needs adjusting, knowing that in the fall is useful because you're able to apply the lime because lime does take longer to react with the soil and to make to, to, to move the soil pH. So knowing that in the fall is useful so you can get your, your lime application down so that when springtime rolls around next year, you're good to go to start the process all over again. So for that reason, I like to do them twice per year, spring and fall. I've, I've done it as much as quarterly when I was just playing with this and just testing to see um, like what's really the happy medium and also just to see how the soil nutrient um, levels change, but really that's overkill in my opinion. Twice per year is um, is really good. I mean, if you do just one and you never do another one, that's better than nothing. But if you're really trying to dial things in, one in the spring, one in the fall is what I think is um, you know is, is produces a great result. And you're talking about sixty bucks, right? Thirty dollars in the spring, thirty dollars in the in the fall. And then if you use the ones from my soil, which is the ones that I like, the nice thing is that all your results are saved, right? So if I show you here. If we go back to the My Soil portal, like if I look at my dashboard, you can see all my soil test results. So pretty much everything, every core, every one that I've ever taken is still here. And if I want to compare, like, you know, whatever, if I want to look at like this, like compare Alex's lawn from, I don't know, whatever. You want to compare like Brett's lawn to Alex's lawn. I don't know why you would do that, but if you wanted to, yeah, here's what, here's how you could do that. If you want to compare two lawns. So one is on one side of me and one is on the other side of me. So my lawn is literally in the, mi in the, in the middle. So Alex lives on one side and the neighbor's on the other side. What's the differences between these two soils? And you can look at them and you can compare the samples. So you've got the data to where you can compare, um, you, you've got, you've got the results for, for, in perpetuity to where you can always can compare samples from, from soil test to soil test. So you can establish trends on how the, uh, the nutrient level in your soil is changing over time. So twice a year, hope that helps Garrett. appreciate the question. That is a good one. Spring and fall is what I am a fan of. 
Hopefully I did a good job explaining why. Hopefully I did a job explaining why. And as far as, again, the one I like, the one from the Soul Test from My Soul, but really just pick, the biggest thing I'd say is pick one and stick with it. So if you wanna use an extension office, that's fine, but pick one and just keep using the same one over and over and over again. So you, so you have consistency in the testing methodology so that you know that you're actually comparing, you know, you're comparing like things whenever you, um, you compare the the samples from like beginning of the year to the end of the year. Don't like do like my soul and then like your local extension office and then like another soul testing thing. Don't like, don't do that. Pick, pick like one and stick with it. And again, for the reasons I said, my soul, I, I like because your, your samples get saved. All right. Uh, we have a, we have a super chat. Let me get down here and grab that really quick. This one is from Mr. Chris style 405. Super chat received. He says, can I mix triad select and certain and Celsius together? You could, but why, but I guess, why would you, uh, Chris? So triad select is a broadleaf herbicide and Celsius is also a broadleaf herbicide. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you could, but why, why, why would you like, like Celsius controls more weeds than triad does. And it also doesn't have the temperature restrictions, like the chances of injury um, with Celsius are far lower than they are with um, with Triad, especially as temperatures go up. The only scenario where I would use Triad in place of Celsius on warm season turf is if you have Bahia grass, um, because you can't use Celsius on Bahia. But outside of that, it'd be Celsius, you know, every every day and twice on Sunday before I use Triad Select, and, and I would not mix them because there's really no reason to. Like there's there's not a whole lot that. There's, I can't think of anything that so that triad controls that Celsius does not control. So I would just go with this if you have a um, if you're looking for a warm season broadleaf herbicide. Hope that helps. I would not uh, wouldn't mix them. No no uh, no reason to uh, to to do that. No reason to do that. So uh, yeah, just go with go go with Celsius. Not um not yeah. I can't. I can't I'm trying to think of why you why you would. And I can't come up with a good reason. I mean, there might be, but I can't come up with a good reason off the top of my head. Would not do that. All right, so let's go and see where we left off. Let me scroll up. I put some um, put some intermission music on for LG and you guys while I find where I left off and have a sip of my lemonade. You know what? Let's just change it up. Yeah, I always play that. Let's uh, put a little reggae. While we, while I have a sip of my lemon, when I am Arnold Palmer and look for the next question. Nothing on Instagram. You guys are quiet tonight. What's going on? You just lurking? Just enjoying? Just sitting back? I get it. It is quiet this time of year, so. All right. Where did I leave off? Higgy Pop. All right, Higgy pops up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron. It's the weekend. It is, Higgy. Thank you so much for uh, taking some time out of your Friday to come say hello. And then Timothy Gonzalez is up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I painted, I planted, I painted, I planted a lawn for my parents in September 1st. See, that's, that's good. You're a good son. I don't know much about you, but I can always tell you're a good son. You went out there and you planted a lawn for your parents. That's good. Very good. You know, we clap it up for that. That's, that's, that's good. Doing doing good things for your parents. I like it. it. says, when spring is starting to come around, will it be established enough to apply pre-emergent? Hmm. September, so <laughs> conventional wisdom says that you want to wait a year before you use pre-emergent on a cool season lawn. I don't have cool season grass, so I can't tell you for sure. I mean, six months, so I mean, if you, if you're going to wait until like, March, April, if you want to roll the dice, you could. But I mean, most, if you look up, if you ask anybody, they're going to say wait a year. They're going to say wait a year before you put pre-emergent on a on a cool season lawn to prevent the the chances of, of injury. And again, I, it's not one of these things. If I had a cool season lawn, I would absolutely test it. Like I would, you know, I would grow a section of my lawn with cool season grass. And like literally three months later, I would put pre-emergent on it and see what happens. And then I'd leave another section. I'd wait six months and put pre-emergent on it and we'll see what happens but I don't have a lawn to be able to do that with. So if you're trying to be super cautious, Timothy, wait a year or at least wait later into the spring, which you're not going to get as good results from the pre-emergent. But if you wait till you're like, you know, seven, eight months in, I would feel less bad about doing that versus applying pre-emergent when it's, you know, four or five months old, if that makes sense. 
Um, what all that's gonna mean, and here's the thing, it's not like not applying pre-emergent is the end of the world. All that means is that you're going to have to rely on post-emergent herbicides, like like three ways, like triad select, like tenacity, uh, you know, like you know, as coolies and herbicides like sedge hammer to control the weeds that could have been prevented if you had used pre-emergent. So it's not that big a deal. You can still use post-emergent herbicides on it, but pre-emergent, you just really want to be careful with that on a cool season lawn. So hope that helps, sir. Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but again, good job on helping your parents get their turf type tall fescue lawn established. It's not a Bermuda lawn, but you know what? We'll still, we'll still give you kudos for, for being a good son. Gregory Collins is up next. He says, step one, eliminate weeds. What do you say to people that think maybe they didn't spray enough or want to spray again because the weeds are not dying fast enough? I say patience. I say patience, Gregory. I would not, here's the thing. I'm not a fan of doing, um, let's say you, you started to work on your lawn in the spring. So we could just, we get Thanos snap, right? And it's now March 15th. Weeds are abound in your lawn and you're saying, this is my year, 2024 is my season, I'm gonna make my lawn the best it can absolutely be. If you were gonna spray herbicides on it, like say you sprayed you know, Celsius Uncertainty because you had a warm season lawn, I would not do anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't reassess reapplying uh, applying more herbicides for at least three weeks. So if you sprayed, say March 15th, I wouldn't wait till like the first week of April, maybe even the middle of April before I said, you know what, okay, I've got some control, but I'm gonna need another application. Because so, the thing is, most of you guys want you guys want the way that that certain Roundup products can behave. Like you know, some certain certain um, Roundup products that have like Diaquat in them. Like you can spray them, spray weeds with them, and literally, you know, that afternoon you'll start seeing it yellow, and then a couple days later the weeds are dead. Selective herbicides don't work that way. Like if you if the, typically the the better the the herbicide, I, what I found anyway, the better the selective herbicide. Um, the longer it can take to, to see results, but the less injury you're gonna get. So you take something like Celsius, if you spray Celsius on a lawn to control like say spurge, and you did that in April, May timeframe, within two weeks, you're gonna start seeing the spurge yellow and begin to die off, but your the grass around it is not gonna really be affected. Like you're not gonna have discoloration, it's gonna look great. Now you can take, you can use some other, some herbicides, like if you, like what's another one? If you did like, um, say like Dismiss, right? It's a good herbicide, great product works faster, but you're gonna see some discoloration in your lawn if you spray that same area with Dismiss. So you're trading like injury to working faster. And what I would say is just like, you know, just spray the spray the weeds, wait the three weeks or so and see how, how, the, how it's working, what kind of control you're getting. And if you gotta go back with another application, go ahead and do that. Because ultimately, like most people think they can, they wanna tolerate the lawn being discolored, but they really don't want to tolerate the lawn being discolored. Like whenever they do it, because I've gotten the emails from, from, from folks, believe me, I've done it. I've gotten, I've got the emails to prove it where people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with spraying with the weeds dying faster and the lawn being yellow for a little while. And then as soon as it starts turning yellow, the emails that follow up are like, well, how can I, if the lawn's yellow because I sprayed, you know, insert XYZ herbicide on it. How can I get it to green back up faster? And I'm like, time. You know, it's just gonna be time, you just gotta wait. So I would, for step one, Gregory, I would give it three weeks on the low end, four weeks, you know, and this is when the weeds are actively growing. So I'm talking about a time of year when they're, when they are, they're living their best life and they're, they're, they're actively growing between herbicide applications. What you'll find is if you are, say you can try to clean up a lawn that's a salad bowl, where you've got a, a combination of sedges and broadleafs in it, and you're doing it in like say late spring, like an application, a single application of Celsius Uncertainty is gonna do a great job, like one application is gonna do a great job cleaning that up, especially if you use surfactant with it. At that point, you're just gonna be doing spot spraying of the areas where you know the weeds are a little bit more resilient or they just need a little bit more help to completely die off. But really, if you're doing it right, you mix the products properly and you're spraying at the time of year when the weeds again are actively growing, it's really, you shouldn't have to keep pounding the lawn with herbicides over and over and over again to get control, you know? So hope that helps. I would say patience is the best way to go about it because if you, you, there's no free lunch. If you want the weeds to die faster, then there are herbicides that will show results faster, but the chances of you also injuring your grass go up as well. And I think that most people will be better playing, taking the long game where you know, we have to wait a little bit longer to see control from the weeds, but the lawn, the color of the turf stays intact for the most part throughout that process. So hope that helps. Might not be the answer that you want to have, but it's it's one that I think that you're gonna you're gonna like to live with better than um, than taking the fast route and 
having Alana's discolored and you know, then you, you reach out and you're asking something else. So hope that helps, sir. Uh, you said, Ron, my front yard is where I put the lime down. Is it 1,200 square feet? That's heavy then. Yeah, 100 pounds of lime over 1,000 square feet is a lot. That is heavy. That's heavy. All right, John L. is up next. He says, hey, Ron, how do I make my emerald zoysia lawn the best in the neighborhood? Same way you make your Bermuda lawn the best in the neighborhood. So I don't know where you're starting, John, but the step one is to eliminate the weeds in your lawn. If you got any, get a soil test done. The one I like is the one from my soil. I'll, I'll send you a link here in a little bit once I get done answering your question where you can pick that up. And then you're going to fertilize your lawn based on the soil test results. Now, there's different strategies for feeding your lawn. You can feed your lawn once a month with a granular fertilizer, or you can go like full tilt, which is what I like to do. And I feed, I do a spoon feeding approach where I use a, a mixture of granular and liquid fertilizers to get what I think is the best result, right? You get more consistency in color, in growth. Um, and the lawn just looks great if you, if you go that route. Once you have eliminated weeds, you've done your soil test, you've, you've got your nutrient program going, it really comes down to mowing. It really does. And, and the thing that separates a good looking lawn from an amazing lawn is how often you mow it. So once you've got the nutrient program under, under, you know, under control, if you can get out there and mow your lawn at least twice a week when it's actively growing, that's going to put you like head and shoulders above the competition in your neighborhood. So hope that helps. That's a, uh, that's the, you know, the one minute answer as far as how you get a great lawn, you know, get rid of the weeds, soil tests, feed your lawn based on the soil tests, and then mow. And the big thing about when you're mowing is make sure you maintain your equipment because the only thing worse than, um, than not mowing your lawn is mowing your lawn with like bad, with like dull equipment. Cause then you're just causing a bunch of injury. You're increasing the likelihood of disease problems. So make sure you keep your equipment sharp. So if you're using a rotary mower, you know, once a month, you know, put fresh up the blade, sharpen the blade, change the blade out, however you want to go about it. If you have a real mower, as long as you are only mowing grass, you're not running over pine needles or, or straw or sticks or other garbage in the lawn, if you're just cutting just grass with it, you should be able to get by with a single grind at the start of the season and then a backlap. You can just use backlapping throughout the season as needed to keep the mower sharp. So as long as the equipment is kept sharp, you're mowing a couple times a week, uh, you, you can't help but have a great looking lawn. You know, you just, it's just like a, it's like a bot, like, like in other words, don't chase the like a, an amazing lawn directly. Like do all the stuff that leads to a great lawn, and like the amazing lawn is a byproduct. Like you just can't help have that because having that because you did all the other stuff right. If that makes sense. So, as far as soil testing, let me get you all squared away here. So if you go to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, and then go to soil test kits and pH adjustments. Um, if you don't have a way to pull cores, I would get this one, but this one you only have to buy one time because it comes with this handy dandy, seriously overbuilt tool that makes it really easy for you to pull your samples. So I will give you that as thing one. So this is where you get your soil test kit, John. And then once you have that, the fun starts, right? Because now you can go over here to the fertilizer section and you can pick out the fertilizer. If you decide you just want to go granular, you've got humic max, the complete, and the stress, depending on whether your soil needs phosphorus or not. And if you said you want to go the uh, uh, like a spoon feeding approach, which is what I really like, then you can start incorporating like the golf course lawn carbon kit. So you, you, depending on which way you want to go, there's lots of different ways to go about feeding your lawn. Um, if you want some guidance on how I do what I do as far as my feeding program, a free guide anyway, like you can join the Golf Force Lawn Academy and that's that you'll get like a lot more detail there. But as far as like starter, if you go to resources and then blog, and then it's going to be on page two, I think. Yes, this blog post on why you should start spoon feeding your lawn goes, tells you all the benefits of spoon feeding. Like this is my lawn from this year. Like that, that's what it actually looks like. That's the picture of, of the lawn. Um, like what spoon feeding means, what do you need to help spoon feed your lawn? And, and I give you a base program that consists of Humic Max and Release 901C. If you scroll down further, I give you the actual rates, spreader settings, um, like how much of the liquid to use, when to do it, like all that jazz. And then you're on your way. You know what I mean? So as long as you start doing that coupled with your regular mowing, you are good to go. And if you want the entire, like an entire program, because the next question you're going to ask me is, well, how do I know what to do like in March and then in April and in May and then June? How do I know what to do? To answer that, if you go back to this link here, resources, and then you click on uh, lawn care schedule, this is a, an annual schedule, breaks down what you can do in the spring, summer, fall, winter lawn care. But the thing, the area that people like the most out of this, this um, 
this knowledge base article is this, the month by month uh, product application schedule. So if you click on that, it breaks down, tells you what to do in March, like scalp your lawn, perform a soil test, apply pre-emergent, apply fertilizer. In April, mow your lawn, aerate, fertilizer, do your, pre your preventative um, insecticide, carbon kit, and so on. And the one thing you're gonna see that's really, that's consistent amount among these, especially when you get into April, is consistent mowing, and consistent mowing, and consistent mowing, and consistent mowing. Because even though it's not a product that I could sell, which I could, um, it's really, from an appearance standpoint, it's the, the most important thing. But it's, if you want like a starter and get, to give you an idea of how to put together your program, uh, this is a great, um, a great resource. It's absolutely free. It walks you through, you know, the, from March to October, what you would apply to your lawn based on what I do on my lawn and it will help you produce a great result. So I'm gonna send you that as well. And you know what, I'm gonna put it here in this chat so that everybody can get to it. So everyone that's on, on the gram and on YouTube and on, I'm oh, sorry, not on the gram, on Facebook can also get to it. If you're on the gram, you guys can see that there. There's the, uh, the post. So hope that helps, John. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. We also have the paid course, the Golf Course Lawn Academy, which is also available uh, here, course details. It's a one-time purchase, it gets you access to training. Um, also gets you access to the private Facebook group, which is probably one of the best parts about the training. I mean, the, the training is also awesome, is awesome in itself. But also the private Facebook group is really cool in the sense that you, you have lots of guys and gals that are in there that are really serious, serious, really hardcore about their lawns and that help each other out, that you can bounce ideas off of. Um, no judgment, you know, it's really, really cool, cool, uh, cool set of people. I, I try and keep it really chill because um, you can't stick around. If you're not chill, you can't stay. You gotta be, you gotta be cool, right? That's a big thing, like no drama. It's a drama-free zone, no drama, right? So I uh, so hope that helps, gives you, I've thrown a ton at you there, but at least that gives you enough to get started on your uh, on your journey. If you have any other questions, you know, feel free to let me know. But yeah, you've got, between the blog, the videos, you've got, you got plenty of content that's gonna help you get um, going as far as um, getting your lawn in great shape. And then Oliver Rudum says, Ron, I think my yard is, is actually common Bermuda, LOL. When the house was built, they laid hydro seed rather than sod. I really don't know. Yeah, if they did if they did hydro seed, um, then it's, it's definitely not Tiffway. It's definitely not Tiffway 419. It could be common, because it, but it looks good, man. Whatever it is, it looks good. I gotta tell you, that's that's a good, some good looking grass right there, man. Where's the close-up? The close-up was the last picture, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that's clean. That, I don't know, no man, that, that leaf is pretty fine to be common, but it looks good. Whatever it is, Oliver, it looks good. Keep maintaining it, keep showing it love because it's obviously responding well to what you're doing. All right, Larry says, Ron, just order the soil test kit, the 901C carbon kit, and lemon fertilizer. Looking forward to the results on my new fescue. Thank you, you are very welcome, sir. Keep up with your mowing. You got all the stuff you need as far as feeding it. From an apparent standpoint, mow it, and it can't help but look good. Can't help but look good. Friday is up next. He says, hey, Ron. Hey, Ron, listen. I've been following you for some time now, and I want to say uh, your lawn has greatly improved. Do you think you can do a drone aerial video shot sometime? I don't have a drone. I, I can bug Alex and see if he'll come out and video it for me at some point. If you want to see, uh, like, like the, the intro for this live stream, like that video is a drone shot. Also, if you wanna see a drone shot of the lawn, if you look at my video on core aeration, um, granted, it's a, it's a drone shot of me aerating the lawn, which is not, probably not, you know, you guys wanna see something when it's looking all pretty, right? I get it. But if you want a video of that, um, there in that video on core aeration, uh, that's where you can also find it. So let me dig that up. Um, uh, great lawns. Dun, 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 dun. Um, let me find it. I have so many videos that it, that literally when I search for like aerate, like it pulls up a bajillion of them. Yeah, here we go. All great lawns do this. Yep. So this video here that I'm gonna link in the chat for you has um, some drone shots of the lawn. Uh, when it was being core aerated, but I, but I get, I get what you're saying. You want something when it's looking all sweet and and pretty. I get it. I'll I'll have to bug Alex next season and see if we can make that uh, make that happen. But this Friday is you'll be able to find it in here at Friday. You fought and uh, core aeration video with ugh, can't type typing is hard with drone shots. Typing and talking can't walk and chew gum. All right, Gary Kellett Jr. is up next. And again, Friday, thank you for the kind words. 
really do appreciate it. I know you've been around for a while, and I agree. The lawn has gotten better over the years for sure. Gary says, hey, Ron, went old school this week and watched uh, the one-on-one, -on -one, one and done Caravan G. Did you ever get that tattoo? What tattoo was I talking about in that video? What, what, I don't, I have to go back and watch, I, I mentioned a tattoo in that video, I have to go back and watch it. I, uh, what would I have been saying? I don't know, I have to go back and watch that video. That's, a, that's an older one, I don't know what I would have said in that one about a tattoo. Hmm, now you got me wondering, I don't know. All right, next up is Luker uh, Payan. Luker, actually, let's see here. Um, we have a question here on Instagram. Uh, Real Hopeful 2 says, is, is it significant to put down a bug grub control right now in Georgia? Right now, I'm in Georgia. I don't think so. So if you're going to do it, the time to control grubs in your lawn is really in the spring. So you can do that. Like I like to do my, um, my grub control in the um, late March, early April time frame. And then if you want to um, further extend your insect control, you can do another application in August time frame. So if you're using a product like a Celeprin, which is an excellent insecticide, controls grubs, pretty much any kind of turf caterpillar, and it doesn't harm, doesn't kill earthworms or pollinators. So it gets rid of the bugs that you don't want, and the ones that you do want, um, you know, the ones that you don't want, the ones we want gone are gone, and the, and the stuff that you want to stay around stays around, which is which is a good thing, right? So this you would apply in late March, early April, and you'd apply it again in, again, August timeframe, and then you're good from, from an insect control standpoint um, on your lawn. This time of year, I mean, could you? Sure, but I mean, it's, it's late in the season. I would, I would have done it two, three months ago if you were gonna do uh, fall insect control. It's a little bit late now to, uh, to be doing this. All right, so I hope that helps, uh, real hopeful. Next up is Luke Nerpayan, he says, Hey Ron, I'm looking to upgrade my mower from our Ryobi mower. What are some good recommendations and equipment I need to have stripes? Okay, so to get stripes, you just need to you need a mower that's just gonna lay the grass consistently in one direction. So even with a rotary, you can technically stripe your lawn, lawn if you put like, um, you know, some people will take like a piece of PVC pipe and put that in the back of the mower. And as they're mowing, it like kind of folds the grass down. Like you can get like, you know, rudimentary stripes with that. But if you want a real mower, um, there's so many good options now. The, the, the ones that I have direct experience with are the Toro Greensmaster, the True Cut, um, the Allet, and um, that new, the new one from Real Rollers of Revolution 26. Um, of those mowers, if I were in the market for a new real mower and I, weren't, I didn't want to break the bank, like I was trying to spend, you know, like under $3,000, it's really hard to pass on the Revolution. I mean, it's, Given it comes with everything you pretty much need, it comes with a solid, solid, um, uh, grooved roller. I'm sorry, it comes with a grooved roller. It comes with, um, you get the Honda GX engine. It's just a, it's a, like my experience with mowing with it has been, was excellent. I mean, as far as like cutting slopes, does great. As far as striping a lawn, does great. Um, yeah, great mower. I mean, there's tons of options out there. You got the Revolution, you got the True Cut, you have the McLean, you have California Trimmer. Um, what else? You can get a pre-owned Greensmaster. That is also going to cut, would do a great job. Uh, out of those mowers that I mentioned, if if all you care about is the absolute best quality of cut, then it's hard to beat a greens mower. The negative to a greens mower is that if you if anything ever breaks on them, they're a lot more expensive to fix because you're buying a mower. Even if you're paying, even though you're paying, like say two to three thousand dollars for the mower, when it was brand new. It's a five-figure mower. Like I last time I priced a Toro Greensmaster, I was quoted something like fifteen thousand dollars. So they're the new one. They're probably even more expensive now, but they're 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 not cheap. Brand new, they're not cheap. Which means if they break, the parts for them are not cheap. Uh, that said, if like ultimate cut, uncompromising cut is your is the only thing you care about, it's really tough to beat a Greens mower. Um, a nice um, like the Revolution Twenty Six gets pretty close. Like you can actually look at a video that I did. Uh, here recently where I show the Revolution 26 against my Greens Master. Let's see if I can find it. Um, where I did a, a comparison of them and if there's not a whole lot in it. I mean, it's, uh, I, the Greens Master still produces a better cut. I mean, because I'm, I'm sitting there looking at it, but if but really, unless you have them to compare side by side, you're not going to be able to tell. So let me get you a... Ooh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Yeah, here we go, yeah, so 
if you just go to my channel, like if you, if you just get on YouTube and just search Revolution 26, like one of my videos are gonna come up because there's only a, a handful of videos out on that mower right now and I have made most of them. So this one, which shows the cut quality of it compared to a Greensmaster is pretty cool. There's that one. And if you wanna see how it does on a sloped lawn, you can look at this one. And this is a cool one because I mean, like kind of like how I did my my other video on the Greens Master where I just did it uncut. I like started up the camera, said, hey, I got the Revolution 26, brand new mower. I've not cut with it before on my lawn anyway. And we're gonna take it and put it on a slope and see how it does. And literally what you're seeing is the very first time that I cut with it on a slope. So consider that it's a mower that I didn't have a lot of experience using on my on my lawn and definitely not on a slope. And you can see the results with it. So if you want to see that video, so Revolution, helps if I click on the, on the box revolution, and I'll just call it Rev26. Rev26 on a slope. You can check out that video. And um, and yeah, so between those, you'll get an idea of how it does, how it cuts. Uh, it's a great mower. I mean, it's it's gonna, I think people are gonna really like it. Um, the ones that, that have already pre-ordered, they're gonna be getting their mowers next year. Um, but you, man, you just, there's so many options now that you really can't go wrong. What I would say is also find in your in your area, wherever you happen to live, Lukner, I don't know where you are, if you can figure out who can also work on your mower, that's important too. So if you, you know, if you're gonna go out and you're gonna buy a true cut, or you're gonna buy a revolution, or you're gonna buy a Toro, like figure out like what shops are in your area that have experience sharpening that mower or feel comfortable sharpening it. You know what I mean? So that's another consideration, but um, you, you really just can't go wrong. You know, I, I would say go for the mower with a rear drum. That is gonna produce the best stripe. So a, a rear drum and a front roller are gonna produce the best stripes because you're basically double rolling the lawn. Like the front roller is rolling the grass down and then the rear drum is coming up right behind it and also rolling the grass down. So as far as getting like killer stripes, it's gonna to be tough to beat a rear drum and a front uh, front roller. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that helps, man. Hopefully that helps answer your question. Again, there's tons of great mower options out there. So whatever you choose, you're, you're probably gonna be happy with. Just make sure that it's, um, you know, something you can get worked on in your area. So, uh, so hope that helps. And you are saying, follow up, you say you live in New Jersey. I would start a new grass in the spring. I'm thinking of Baron Brug or Jonathan Green. Any, any recommendations? I can't give you a direct ex a recommendation from experience because I don't have a cool season lawn. Uh, I can tell you that Baron Brug uh, is what I've recommended to people because when I've asked friends of mine that do have cool season lawns, that's what they use. And no one has thrown tomatoes at me yet for that recommendation. Like anyone that I've said, hey, go get Baron Brug grass seed. Like they make good grass seed. Well, people that have followed that have been very happy with the results they've gotten. So Jonathan Green might be fine too, uh, but Baron Brug is a is a great seed, great quality seed. I don't think you're going to be unhappy with that if you decide to go that route. And then finally, you say I have a I have at least fifteen thousand square feet. I have large trees all over my lawn. I started to pick up the leaves, but concluded I can't win. I, I just mulch them in, feeling bad now. Well, I mean. <laughs> I guess, man, I mean, you're gonna do a renovation next year, so it doesn't really matter, but I just, I, I don't think that if you have tons of buildup on your lawn, you wanna continually mulch the leaves over and over and over. You wanna get that stuff out. You don't wanna, um, you don't wanna put that much, that much debris, that much material into the lawn, in my opinion. Uh, and given that you have a 15,000 square foot lawn, in your case, you're gonna be someone that's gonna to wanna to go with a wider track. So like the Revolution 26 is a 26 inch width of cut, I believe. So a wider mower is gonna be a consideration as well too for you because 15,000 square feet to push mow that, you wanna make those few passes as you have to. Plus you're gonna to wanna to go with wider stripes. It's gonna look better on a larger property. So a wider mower, again, better choice than say like a 20 inch wide uh, uh, mower. Okay. Next is Reber'sdorf says, uh, on a split application of pre-emergent, what's the soil temp in the spring we should be looking at and when to apply? So great question, Reber'sdorf. So whenever you're doing your spring pre-emergent applications, you wanna get it in the soil prior to the average soil temps being in the mid 50s. Crabgrass and other weeds begin to germinate then. So it's the answer is don't wait until the average soil temps are 55 degrees. When, that, when the average soil temps are like in the high 40s, low 50s, go ahead and get your pre-emergent down. When it comes to pre-emergent, a little bit early is always better than a bit late. So 
before soil temps reach the mid fifties is the best answer as far as um, as far as your timing of your pre emergent. That's uh, that's what I do. And again, I always bias towards being a little bit early, but being a week or two early, and that has served me well as far as keeping my lawn weed free. So hope that helps. Earlier is better than later. Don't be one of these people that are like, oh, it's fifty five degrees. It's been fifty five degrees for like two weeks now. I am gonna go put my pre emergent out, and then you wonder why you know two months later you got crabgrass and all kinds of other stuff in your lawn because you waited too long right? Because it's, it's in the name. You have to have it in the soil prior to the weeds emerging for you to get the best result with it. So, uh, so there you go. Matthew Smith is up. No, actually, we have another question here. It's one from uh, Real Hopeful. It says, do you recommend hydrogen on Bermuda grass? If so, how often? I do recommend it. I do recommend that you use a moisture manager. And um, I like it every two months, every 60 days. They say it will last for 90 days. But I, I just do it every two months. So um, if you, if in that, what that means is if you did an application in um, April, you'd be one in April, one in June, and so on and so forth. And that's gonna, that's gonna do a pretty good job, especially as summer temperatures get hotter and the, the turf begins to dry out more. Um, the having the hydrotain in the soil prior to like the summer heat really hitting is gonna allow your lawn to do better. Like it's gonna be less. It's gonna, it's gonna not gonna see heat stress. As, as quickly, it's not gonna dry out as quickly as the surrounding lawn. So what you don't wanna do is this, you don't wanna wait until like July and say, oh, it's July, I'm gonna start putting hydrogen on my lawn and, and see if that'll help. I mean, it'll do something, but really you wanna have it in the soil prior to um, the, the, the temperatures really getting hotter. So I would start in April, like beginning of April and just do it every two months. So April, again, in June and so on and so forth. So hope that helps. Uh, I absolutely do recommend moisture managers. A big fan of them. They work great. Good, good, important addition to your to your uh, your program, especially if you live in a part of the country where at, during the summer months you'll have like restrictions on watering. You're going to want to have a moisture manager, right? Because the little bit of water that you're able to put down, you want to get the most out of it. So especially if you're in Texas or other parts of the country where they they uh, they say, hey, no watering this time of year. Moisture manager. All right, Matthew Smith is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I just started getting into doing my lawn myself. I took a soil test a couple of weeks ago. I have a centipede lawn. My pH was 4.6. My NPK was bottomed out as well as my micros. My secondary macros were on the low end of optimal. Would you recommend this coming season? I already have some calcitic lime to put down. Awesome. And then you say, I live on the Georgia coast. I have 25,000 square feet willing to do liquid or granular. Okay, so I haven't seen your soil test results, but based on what you're saying, it needs a bit of everything. Not just a little bit, but a little bit of everything. So macros, micros, and um, and everything in between. So what I would say is, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to shop, and then lawn fertilizer, you're gonna wanna go with something like the Complete 14714. Reason being is this has got all your, it's got the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It has micronutrient in it. It also has um, some sulfur. It has, oh, where can I get a, 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 a bigger, a bigger, a zoomed in one of it? Um, can I do that? Can I do that here? Yeah, I think I can. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So as far as your sulfur, you got like, you're putting like 6% sulfur in there. You're putting some magnesium in it. So, in, so you have, it's covering your macros, micros, and also the secondaries in between. You're, you're also helping to build those up. So I like that. So this, this is a great, this is a great foundational fertilizer. This is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting, the 14714. Now, as far as also, as far as your liquid program, um, you could go with Nutrizolve because this is gonna have all the micronutrients. So whereas the 14714 has um, some iron and I, I think a bit of magnesium in it, this is also gonna have, Nutrizolve is gonna have your zinc, your molybdenum, your boron, your copper. It's gonna have the complete suite of micronutrients. So I would use the 14714 for the heavy lifting. I would use um, Nutrizolve for your micronutrient. And if you if you're fine with um, if you also want to add biostimulants to this as well, you could mix Nutrizolve along with the 901C carbon kit. So this version of the carbon kit, and you'd be you'd be good to go. Now in your case, given that you have you said 25,000 square feet. You need your 25,000 square feet. I actually wouldn't buy the carbon kit because it's not going to work. I mean, given your lawn is too big to, for using, to buying, for using this kit. You still use the same product. So 901C, NutriCalp, Biospectrum, but you'd get them um, in the Miramichi green section. You'd buy them like either in the gallon or two and a half gallon. 
So a tool to help you out, Matthew, is if you look here, if you go to, and granted, you got 25,000 square feet, so it's a big lawn. So if you go here and you go to resources and you go to lawn fertilization calculator, this will tell you like how much of what you need for your lawn. So we're gonna put in 25,000 square feet. We'll hit next. You have warm season grass, I think you said. Yep, you got set up lawn. So there we go. You wanna do spoon feeding? We'll say yes, just because, right? You said you'll do liquid or um, or granular, maybe both, why not both? Does your soil need phosphorus? According to what you're telling me, yes, it does. And then do you wanna use growth regulator? Um, you know, we're, we're just gonna, we'll say no for now. And then do you wanna use granular biosimilant? We'll also say no for now. I mean, if you wanna do, if you say yes to this, it's gonna add essential G to it. But for now, we're just gonna say just fertilizer, what are you looking at? So it's gonna tell you, you're gonna need three bags of the complete 14714 for 25,000 square feet. You're gonna to wanna to go with um, a two and a half gallon of 901C, same thing of NutriKelp, and then a 17 ounce of Biospectrum. This is gonna be enough from the liquids, that's gonna be enough for at least three months, right? And then you can go down here, add that to cart, and it's gonna have everything you need for, for feeding from a liquid standpoint of doing your lawn. And then the granular, you'll just add that. This, in other words, this you will only do every three months at, at the most, and the granular, you would do that monthly, so. Again, 25,000 square feet, it's not gonna be inexpensive uh, to do, but I will get you a link to that, to the calculator, because that's that's easier than me telling you, go here, go there, you know, go find all this different stuff. Like, th that's why I built this tool, um, is because, like, literally for someone like you or someone that just wants, like, hey, I'm gonna put some, answer a few basic questions and tell me what I should be using on my lawn, or, or you know, like, spit out, like, what, how much of everything I'm gonna need. That's what this uh, was is designed for. So, let me get you a link to that. You can play with it. You can play with adding growth regulator if you want, adding granular biosimilants if you want, and uh, this will get you all squared away. So Matthew Smith, and this is Lawn Fertilization Calculator. Excuse the typos. I'm talking and I'm typing at the same time, so that is a bad recipe. And I'll link it down here as well, too, so for any of you guys that are watching on other platforms. So hope that helps, sir. Good job on taking on the challenge of working on your lawn yourself. 25,000 square feet is not a small lawn to, to not a small property, but uh, but yeah, you know, just if you're consistent with it, you can make it make it look great. I'm guessing you're probably going to be using a zero turn or some kind of some kind of ride on mower. That's quite a bit to push, but uh, but yeah, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, uh, next up is um, Theodore Nobles. Theodore Noble he says, "What's up, Ron? I got um, my fall pre-emergent down in early October. What is the what is the best time to put it down in the spring?" So you got your fall pre-emergent down in October. What's the best time to do your spring pre-emergent app? So same thing. Um, if you're in Southeast Georgia, uh, I would say um, the most correct answers before soil temps are in the mid 50s. If you are looking from like a time frame perspective, like what calendar wise, I do my pre-emergent in February. I'm a little bit early, so I do I do mine in um, mid 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 February is when I'd like to get my pre-emergent down. So if you just want to go by that, you can. If you want to wait till like the first week of March, you can do that too. Uh, but that that time frame um, is gonna that's gonna have you in the ballpark. But again, the most accurate way is to say is to to. Google say in my zip code, what are the average soil temps? There's websites that'll tell you that. And before the average soil temps, not when, before the average soil temps are in the mid 50s is when you're gonna wanna apply your pre-emergence. So February, March timeframe is when um, when I would say to go for it. And you say you have common Bermuda, doesn't matter, same, still, answer's still the same. Before mid 50s is what you're after. All right, um, Michael Robertson says, who do you use in Atlanta to work on your real mowers? I use a couple different people. So for the Greensmaster, it, traditionally it's been Jerry Pate company. And then um, there's also a guy, um, uh, Michael Hammond, Atlanta Real Mowers. He has done the sharpening for the Allet. So you can, you know, you, he likely do all of them really. If you have a True Cut or a McLean or a Trimmer, he can, I'm sure he can work on any of them. Um, but, um, but, the outlet, I gave him the the um, the cutting cartridge for that, and he did a great job. And then for the greens master, that normally goes down to Jerry Pate, and they they sharpen it. But there's tons of different places, man. You got Peachtree Real Mowers. There's um, I think it's called the Real Man. Like the he they also do it. There's, I mean, these are just the ones that I have direct experience with. Doesn't mean that the other ones are bad. Just go, you know, you just do your research. 
um, and um, and then you just call them and say, hey, listen, I've got this particular mower. Are you guys, you know, familiar with doing work on this on this particular mower and see what they say and and get it, you know, get get it uh, get it in and get it serviced. In this area, in the Atlanta area, there's a lot of people with real mowers and there's a lot of shops that will work on real mowers. So you've got you've got plenty of options for getting your equipment taken care of. So hope that helps, uh, Ro um, Robert or Michael. Uh, if you need anything else, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, next up is Andre Taylor. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. When pulling cores, do you suggest pulling it on a somewhat moist damp or dry lawn? Pulled cores earlier in the year, but had to hammer in the plug. Okay, so uh, I like the lawn, the soil to be moist. So if, you're, if your soil is like a clay soil, putting a bit of water on it ahead of time, like a day or two before, um, is gonna allow you to get a better job, a better result when you core aerate. It doesn't need to be sopping wet, like you shouldn't like run a heavy irrigation cycle and then go aerate your lawn, that's gonna make a mess. But you want the soil to be, you know, have some moisture in it so the tines can penetrate the soil better and you can get you can get those plugs out. So, um, so yeah, slightly moist, but not like to where it's wet. You know what I mean? I'm saying like you, you, I wouldn't run an irrigation cycle and then go core aerate your lawn right after that. I would water the lawn, say the day before, and then core aerate the following day. And in that video that I linked uh, earlier, it covers, it shows you, it talk about, it talks about all that. And I actually also got a blog post, Andre, on said subject as well. So if we go to resources and then blog, and I think it's gonna be on the second page. On core aerating, maybe it's the third page at this point. Let's see. Yep, maybe page three. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Yep, here we go. How to core aerate your lawn. So this this talks about what I just said in in more detail, like the benefits of core aeration, um, when to do it, the ground isn't frozen or hard. Talk about running irrigation. This is the video that shows the process that I like to do when it comes to aerate to aerating. Um, you know, preparing your lawn and making sure your equipment is clean, making sure like, you know, you make, if you rent an aerator that it's not, you don't just take it from like Home Depot or you get one and drop it on your lawn that you clean it up properly first. Uh, like again, here, same thing we're talking about, water your lawn a day or two before core aeration is gonna help the tines, you know, penetrate deeper. So this is, I mean, it's not a long blog post, but as far as giving you some guidance on how to get a good result with core aeration based on what how I've done it, um, it's fairly useful. So I will get that to you. I will... Send that to you here in the chat, Andre. Andre Taylor. So that next year, when you decide you're gonna go court area salon, you are all set. And as far as pulling cores or not picking, uh, picking up cores or not picking up cores, on my lawn, I do not pick up cores. On, on the lawns around here, Alex's lawn, I don't pick up cores. If you have a clay soil where whenever the cores dry, they get really hard, in that case, pick up the cores. So it really depends on your soil type, type whether you should pick up cores or not. And I talk about that in the video that's in that blog post. So there you go. All right, so we have another super chat. This one is from Mr. Luis Ayabareño. Thank you so much, Luis. Super chat received. He says, evening all, joining late tonight. Temps are going to be in the low 50s this weekend. 50s, man, we getting, we're in low, we're in 39 right now. 39 degree temperatures here in Georgia. You can't believe it. You guys are warmer up north than we are. It's crazy. Low 50s this weekend, the lawn is still green and growing. So guys, for those of us that have with warm season lawns, when a cool season guy says, hey, the lawn is still green and growing, subtle flex. They're just trying to give you information, but it's also like a subtle lawn flex is what's really happening there. I just want to translate that. It is okay to probably do last mow for the season uh, on these low, in these uh, low temps? Uh, sure, I would say, are you sure you're done mowing, uh, Luis? I mean, if you're, you know, if you're saying it's only going to go in the 50s, that's, I mean, your lawn should still keep growing in those temperatures. I wouldn't think it's going to start checking out um, if the temps are going to stay in the 50s. If you if you have another, you know, three three weeks of temperatures where you can mow the lawn a couple times per week, I would continue to feed it. If that's not the case, or I would continue to feed it with a granular fertilizer. If that's not the case, then you could switch to liquids and just go just with spoon feeding every couple of weeks because that's not going to that's not going to build up nutrient up in the soil like uh, like you know a granular a granular fertilizer will. So, but it sounds like you're still, your lawn is still living its best life. So yeah, if you if it's time for you to put a fertilizer down, go for it. Sounds like it's uh, it's doing great. Thank you so much for the super chat, sir. I really appreciate all the love and support. And then next we have um, Lukner. He says, thanks so much, Ron. I hope to share pictures next spring after the renovation. Nice, Lukner. So what I would tell you, when it comes to pictures of your lawn, take pictures before, 
during if you can, and then after. Because once you start this process, the lawn is never gonna look the same again, and you wanna be able to, you know, you wanna be able to do what Oliver did. You wanna be able to say, hey, this is where I started, not super happy about that, and now this is where I ended up. You wanna be able to have pictures to show like, you know, from that to that. You wanna have that kind of stuff. So make sure you take tons of pictures because the lawn, you know, once you go through this journey, the lawn's never gonna look the same again. All right, Gary Keller Jr. says, uh, Ron, my wife is going crazy. I just told her I need to start stocking up on fertilizer and biostimulants. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want the lawn, she wants the lawn to look nice, right? I guess, you know, that's, that's all part of it. I mean, I'm sure she has her things that she likes to do and spend money on. I mean, here's the thing you gotta realize, Gary. If you're spending money on your hobby, the lawn and, you know, although I think the lawn personally falls into it's for the house category. You know, like a lot of times wives will say that, they'll go out shopping, they'll be like, well, sweetie, you want you bought X, Y, Z. And they'll always say, it's for the house. It's for everybody. It's for the house. I think the lawn kind of counts uh, for the, it's for the house category, but she may not, that might not fly with her. But at any rate, as long as she, you know, she gets allows, allowed to, you know, do her thing in her space, shouldn't have too much, uh, too much headache with that. At the end of the day, remember this mantra, Gary, happy wife, happy life. So make your decisions accordingly. All right, next up is uh, Mr. Brown Jr. says, is fall nitrogen blitz a good practice on tall fescue lawn or is it just YouTube hype? I think when they talk about that, what they're really, what they're referring to is feeding the lawn with nitrogen using like a spoon feeding approach. Like what I call spoon feeding, I believe that's what they're calling uh, the nitrogen blitz. What I would say is this, is I would not put more nitrogen into your soil than is appropriate for your particular grass type. So whether you do that once per month, whether you do that every week, or whether you do that every two weeks, or whatever sequence or whatever interval you want to use for, for applying it, that's up to you, but I would not exceed like the amount that's that's appropriate for your particular grass type, um, Mr. Brown. Um, so yeah, is it is it hype? I, I would say no. I mean, there are benefits to spoon feeding. There are benefits to, instead of apply, fertilizing your lawn once per month, uh, breaking up the, um, the same amount of nutrient that goes into your soil, but doing that over uh, more more frequent intervals, like you get more, again, more consistent growth. You don't get, um, it's just more consistent. Um, but I, overall, the big thing I want to roll back to is you don't want to take the, uh, take the fact that you are out there feeding your lawn more frequently, that you're feeding your lawn more, that you're putting more into it. Like you wouldn't want to go out there and like double the, double the rates um, just because you're out putting nutrient in the lawn, you know, a couple times a month. So Whatever, if you decide you're going to go weekly, that's fine. Just take what you would normally put in the lawn and divide that by four. If you can do it by, you know, by, uh, you know, every two weeks, take what you put in the lawn and per month and divide that by two and a half. In the end, don't exceed the amount of nutrient that is appropriate for your grass type is what I would say. If you do that, you're going to be fine. Uh, Harper's Knitter says, my question was vague. What type of grass do they use on MLB parks. I think it varies. I think a lot of it is ryegrass um, harpers, but it, it it varies. You'd have to, you could figure out for each field, you can go to, to, the, to that particular field and be like Fenway Park, what kind of grass do they use? And it'll, they'll, uh, they'll say, but it varies from field to field. Kind of like, uh, you know, football fields, like some of them, like soccer, I think soccer, like I believe soccer, FIFA actually specifies ryegrass for football pitches. Um, I believe that's correct because during the World Cup, I was looking into this as far as the kind of grasses they use, and FIFA does does specify what kind of grass you should be using. But I don't think that's, that's the same for um, for other sports. Like for football, I don't know that you have to use like ryegrass because there are football fields that use Bermuda, and there's others that use different grass blends. So um, to know what to know what kind of grass your particular field uses that you like your team uses, just Google it. Just ask, okay, what kind of grass does you know? Well, SunTrust Stadium use, and it'll tell you exactly what it is. I would imagine it's probably it's more than likely Bermuda, and they likely will overseed it with ryegrass if they want it to look nice during the winter time. So I would guess Bermuda in the southeast, but you know, depending on where you're in the country, it'll it'll likely be different. Darren Proctor is up next. He says, uh, "Hey Ron, I'm just here listening to the great questions from everyone. I did finally receive recognition herbicide. Going to wait until spring to use recognition combo. Thanks again for your help. You're very, very welcome, Darren. Yeah, man. Yeah. So recognition. Um, what he's talking about is recognition and fusilade, which is a. I don't have fusilade here, but um, but if you, it's a combination. It's a it's a combination for removing Bermuda grass in Vizoja and Saint Augustine and Kakayu grass. So it's before you think about it. In years past, removing Bermuda out of St. Augustine wasn't really 
easily done. Removing Bermuda and Zoysia. You could use Fusilay, but you had to be careful with the rates. Um, with this new herbicide that, that Syngenta released called Rec Recognition, um, it has a safener in this called Metcamifen that allows you to apply Fusilate at higher rates on Zoysia without injury and also allows you to apply it on St. Augustine, which you couldn't use Fusilate on St. Augustine before without injury. Uh, the, the bad thing about this is that this is really hard to get right now. Like it's, it's, we're going to get more of it, but it likely won't be until like next year. Um, so, cause they're just, they just, the first batch, they just didn't make enough of it. So they're just really restrictive of, of releasing it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm glad you got some Darren and, uh, you know, those of you with St. Augustine or Zoysia Lons that are trying to get rid of Bermuda, there's finally a solution that will work well. On that note, there's a couple of, there's a couple of blog posts that we did on this topic. So if you go to Golf Horse Lawn Store and blog, there is this um, this blog post on that talks about the the, the kit and also the fusilade and recognition. Um, it shows this is actually a user's lawn that did, that did some testing with it. So this is, even though this looks nice, this is really a lot of Bermuda grass and some zoysia. So it's largely Bermuda with some zoysia in it. So this is before. This is now the Bermuda is dead, which left the zoysia. And then if you move down some more, this is showing you the kit, recognition, Fusilay 2. And if you move down some more, I think there's some more, there's some more pictures in here. This looks nice, right? But it's largely, it's, a lot of this is Bermuda, but it's Bermuda and Zoysia. And then this is the Bermuda removed from the, from the lawn and the Zoysia is still there relatively unharmed. So as far as selectively doing this in the past, there wasn't really a way to do it. Um, you're doing, you're, you're doing the, taking the right approach, Darren, waiting until the springtime um, because Ideally, you want to apply that whenever the Bermuda is actively growing, because in this case, we're treating it like a weed. And um, if there's any mild stunting to the zoysia, which can happen, or St. Augustine, which can happen, you want to do that whenever the grass is actively growing so it grows through it faster. So uh, so yeah, so we've got a blog post. If you guys are interested in reading more about that, you can go to the resources and blog section of the Golf Course Lawn Store. Uh, and this is all about Fusilade and... Um, and recognition, and this is another blog post that was released, uh, I think Wednesday, a couple of days ago, that talks about, uh, you know, I've gotten some questions around, hey, I want to mix like Bermuda and Kentucky bluegrass, or I want to mix Bermuda and St. Augustine, or I want to mix Bermuda, and, you know, whatever. You want to mix different types of grass, and why that's typically not a good idea, and it breaks down why, like the issues, like you can see the differences in color and, and growth consistency, and just looks kind of a mess. Um, but this talks about that in detail and if, and towards the end, it says, if you decide you want to do that, you can do the Robert Rainey, right? And the situations of how you can use cool season grass and warm season grass together, as long as you're doing that at different times of year. So if you want to learn more about that, um, about mixing grass types and what to avoid and what can work together with a good program, a good plan, uh, check out the, the, the most recent blog post on the golf course lawn store because it talks all about that. So. Thank you so much, Darren, for the question and all the support. And if you need anything else, let me know. Mm. Archie Amo says, didn't Real Roller say you could ship the reel back to them when sharpening is needed? Mm, I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know how you would do that, though, Archie, because on the Revolution, it's the the reel is not you can't take the reel out it's not it's um it's fixed it's not like a interchangeable cartridge system so you not like you can't really remove the reel on the revolution and sharpen it the nice thing about it is that backlapping the revolution 26 is super easy like literally you take there's nothing to disassemble you take just like just a cover off and you I think it's a half inch drill i think it's a half inch socket you put that on the reel and then run the, run the reel in backwards, put your lapping compound, and it's really easy to backlap. It's, it's not like backlapping a true cut, which is an absolute nightmare. Uh, that mower is a dream to backlap. Literally just taking the cover off, the chain guard off, and then put a drill on there, run it backwards, and do your lapping compound, and away you go. So that, from, so from a standpoint of maintaining the mower once it is sharpened, it's easy compared to, to other mowers in that, in that class, in that category. All right, next up. <clears throat> we have Terrence Stamps. He says, good evening, all, Ron. I'm joining late, but hope it's all as well. I'm in PA. I think last night was the first frost. Still okay to put down Essential G? Eh, if, you, if it's the first frost, Terrence, that means snow's not too far away. I would, I would wait if, I, if it were me. Um, I'm not a fan of applying not just Essential G, but really any granular products whenever you're, you're starting to encounter conditions where the soil, where the ground might freeze. 
So I, I would I would say hold off. In Georgia, you can do it pretty much year round because it doesn't get cold enough here, not consistently anyway, to where you can't apply um, a granular biosimilar. But further up north, that's not the case. So if you're you got your first frost, which means you're likely going to start having snow, I would uh, I would hold off. Great question. And you know what, Terrence, because of that question, it was a great question around the topic of Essential G around and his Miramichi product. You, sir, will be our Miramichi question of the week. So the question was around, can you apply it after the first frost? And I think we answered that well. So if you want one of these shirts, one of the greatest from the ground up t-shirts for free, uh, let me know. And you can email me, where is it? My email address is right here ron at golfcourselon.com. Send me an email there with your address and I will tell you how to get your free t-shirt. So if you want that, uh, send me an email and you'll get one. Appreciate the question. It's a good one. All right. So let me make a note of this so I can Terrence Stamps and you are where's she question of the week. And cool. Got it. Gotcha. 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 Cool, man. Congrats on the shirt if you like t-shirts. Not everybody likes t-shirts, but if you want one, you just want a free one. All right, Andre Taylor says, uh, sorry, Ron, not cores for core aeration. I mean, plugs for soil test. What was your question around cores then, Andre? Uh, when pulling cores, you're just pulling it in somewhat moist. Oh yeah, yeah, so um, you, I mean, <laughs> pulling it on soil that's dry versus moist. I mean, I would say, I wouldn't I wouldn't go out and run an irrigation cycle to be able to cool, to pull cores. If you're, you know, if you're I've in other words, I've never run, I've never had to run into an issue with getting cores out of my um out of my lawn. If you are regularly watering your lawn, you should I don't have a probe here, you should be able, yeah, I said the garage, you should be able to easily insert that core, that probe tool to pull cores um out of your lawn without too much difficulty. So you should not have to run an irrigation cycle to be able to get cores. So in that, in that case, you shouldn't have to water it and that's, that, 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 that'd be fine. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do anything special to get cores um, using the probe tool that the, the MySoil test kit comes with. So, or some of them come with it. The, if you buy the standalone test, the standalone test, it, the kit does not come with that. If you buy, let me just show you. I'm talking in circles here. Let me make sure I can just show you what I'm talking about. If you buy this one, the starter pack, it comes with the probe. If you buy just the soil test kit, it does not come with the probe, but you really only need to buy this one one time because then you'll have the probe and you won't need it anymore. Or you could just buy the Pro Pack, which comes with one probe and two soil test kits, and this is like your all you, everything you need for a year. So just depends on which way you want to go. All right, we will scroll down. We'll find the next question. We are winding down, guys and gals. Matthew Berge, Berge is up next. He says, hey, Ron, how many times a year and what time of year do you core aerate? Also, how deep do you go? I did four inches this year and it might have been a little too rough on my compadre zoysia. Four inches, what kind of what kind of core aerator do you use, man? Most of the stuff that you can rent won't go that deep. Uh, as far as um, number of times, for me, normally once per year, unless I'm top dressing, in which case I'll do it as part of the top dressing work. And how deep, it's normally two to three inches. You know, two, two inches, two, two inches on the low end, um, two to three inches is about what you get for cores out of the um, out of the most core areas that you can rent. I'll actually show you what they look like. You can see here, if you look up close, if we come here, like you see my finger there, like that's how big the cores are. So that's like two inches, maybe two and a quarter, not super long, not four inches. Um, most like most of the core aerators that you rent at the big box stores are not going to be able to get deep enough to get a four inch plug. And, um, yeah, so that's what I, that's what I normally use. I just use one that I can rent and I get, you know, I get a four inch, I get like a two to three, two, between two to three inches is what I normally get as far as cores on my soil and my lawn tolerance is just fine. And I do it in the springtime. So April ish timeframe is a good time to core aerate your lawn. You know, the lawn's waking up, it's growing, growing well, and it should grow, it'll recover faster versus if you do it earlier in the season. And you said four inches. Yeah, four inches might be, might be a bit rough on your compadre. It'd be interesting to know what kind of, what, what kind of aerator you use, because unless you're using like uh, one of those Toro units that you can walk, like one of the ones you can, you, you can stand on, um, like those will get to four inches pretty easily. But the ones that you rent, the big box stores, don't typically go that, uh, go that deep. 
So hope that hope that helps, Matthew. And again, around core aeration here, watch, read this uh, this blog post. It like one of the points that are in there is on like how deep to pull cores. And in most cases, you're really limited by the equipment that you have access to more than anything else. Got a super chat from Mr. L John L. Thank you so much, John. Super chat received. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for all the, the love and support. This is Ron. Thanks for all the hard work. I appreciate it. And we are winding down, guys and gals. Tavares Jones it says, is recognition suitable for, remo for removing Bermuda from tall fescue? No. If you, The nice thing, the good news for you, T Tavares, is if you want to use remove Bermuda from tall fescue, you don't need recognition. You can just use Fusilade. So in your case, you would just go here to shop and then weed killer and then fusilade two because fusilade two by itself is labeled for use on top fescue you would not you would again absolutely not do not mix recognition with fusilade and spray that on on a fescue you're gonna have a bad day by itself fusilade two can be used for um for selectively controlling bermuda grass in 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 fescue there's other products too you could look into what else can you get to you could look into pilex you could look into a claim uh, look at those, check the labels and see if those are labeled for use on fescue. Uh, Fusilade is the less expensive out of those two. Like Pilex is like three, over $300 a bottle. It's, it's pretty expensive. It's a great product, but it's, it's more expensive. And then a claim, I don't know what that one costs, but I believe it also costs more than Fusilade. So if you want to, to, you know, control Bermuda in your fescue, take a look at, um, read the label, obviously, you know, confirm what I'm telling you, but, uh, but Fusilade by itself can be used for doing that. It can be used on tall fescue and fine fescue, like tall fescue, fine fescue, zoysia, and ornamentals. So that is, uh, that's where Fusilade, Fusilade shines. Um, so I'll send you a link to that, Tavares, at Tavares, and Fusilade dos. Not one, but two. Yeah, so look into that. But do not, again, do not mix recognition with it if you're spraying it on tall fescue. You will have a bad day. Don't do that. All right, next up is Terrence Stamps. He says, another question with a 2,000 square foot lawn, I'm trying to budget for 2024. Is there a cost calculator out there somewhere or must I be specific? Thanks for the shirt. You're very welcome. Use this, use the calculator on the store. So you could take like, uh, like so Terrence, you have a 2,000 square foot lawn. You could go to uh, resources and then lawn fertilization calculator. And we're gonna say 2,000 square feet and you have a cool season lawn and because you're a boss, you're gonna do spoon feeding. We're gonna say that, right? You're gonna go. You're gonna go full tilt. You don't need phosphorus. You are gonna use growth regulator because you want to use growth regulator. Actually, you know what? Let's just do fertilization. We'll 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 we'll, we'll leave out the we'll leave out the growth reg. No growth reg. And we'll say sure to buy some ones. Why not? All right. So one bag of the stress tool zero twenty four that is gonna cover you because that covers ten thousand square feet. So you're gonna get five applications out of that. Um, the carbon kit is gonna cover you for three months. So you'll get at least, you know, three months of applications out of that. And then a bag of Essential G will cover you for a month. Um, well, no, it's 4,000 square feet, so two months. And so you see, so for, so for pretty much four months, four to five months, three months, two months, $250 is what you're gonna be spending. And then as you start adding, if you add Primo, that's going to be an additional expense. But I mean, it, but this is for several months in the season. It's not like just one month. You know, that's that's one of the benefits. You guys don't want to ever say, oh, I have a small lawn. My lawn's not that big and it can't look that great. One benefit to a smaller lawn is it's a whole lot less expensive to take care of it. So there's that. So Terrence, I'll send you a link to the lawn fertilization calculator. You can play with that at your heart's content. You can add, remove products as you so desire, and it will, um, it will, you know, you'll be able to determine like what uh, what you're going to end up spending. It's a way to kind of figure out what it's going to cost you. Lawn fertilization. You know what? I'm going to put it here. Uh, calculator. There you go. And for the folks, guys and gals on Facebook, it is there as well too. So, good stuff. Cool season, next, 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 next. Cool. All right, um, I think guys and gals, we have Tavares, he says, thanks, you're very welcome, Tavares. No problems at all. And then Matthew says, I forgot to ask, uh, will you still scalp your lawn every year? If so, when and how low do you go? Yeah, so here's the thing. I, my, the need for me to scalp my lawn has become less since I've got ha gotten the outlet, right? Because as far as 
getting a lot of the debris out of the lawn. Like it, I get, I'm able to keep it largely debris free using the turf rake. Um, if I'm going to scalp it, it would be in late February. Well, in the past, I would do like a, a pre scalp. I do like a, a light scalp uh, in like February and then do another one in March. Um, now, if I'm going to do it, I really only have to do one, and it would be like late February, March time frame. Whenever the it gets starts getting warmer and the grass starting to wake up, that's when I will I will scalp it. And as far as um, height of cut, I'll take it to about half an inch, maybe just under half an inch. I don't go down to the dirt because I'm I maintain my lawn at three quarters of an inch, so there's no need to 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 go super low. So uh, so yeah, hope that helps, Matthew. And he says, and it was the stand up one. I hired someone. Yeah, that makes sense. I was about to say four inches, like the rental core aerators won't go that that deep. So you must have had must have had some serious equipment, man, some heavy duty equipment to be able to pull that off. All right. And then we have a question here, a comment from Real to Hopeful says, I thought mulching the leaves into your grass helps the soil conditioner and treats and feeds your grass during the winter months. In small amounts, yes. But I mean what I would say is if if you mulch um, you know, the leaves on your lawn, you know, it's it's I, I would say this um um real hopeful. What I would not want you to do is to have your entire lawn covered in leaves and mulch that. If you get, like whenever the leaves fall, if you get that off and then you have some leaves falling here and there and you mulch that into the lawn, that would be okay. But I wouldn't want you to have, you know, a couple inches of leaves on the lawn and then you just run over your mower with that instead of getting them off. Like that is what I'm not not in um, in agreement with doing. So uh, so hope that helps. Hope that helps clarify, clarify my position. All right, Mark from... Hawaii, he's saying aloha. As always, enjoy the discussions. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate that. Appreciate you tuning in. Although for you, it's probably what in the afternoon. It's like three or four o'clock in the afternoon right now, which is cool. All right, guys. I think that is it. Tavares Jones says thanks. And guys and gals, on that note, cue the outro music. Really do appreciate you guys taking some time, even though the season is winding down, that you guys are still coming to hang out with me and uh, supporting the channel, supporting the content. Um, we've got great, lots of great blog content. So if you guys are looking for you know, getting your 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 lawn, something up your lawn game over the season, or just looking for products to stock up for next year, feel free to check out the Golf Course Lawn Store. We have our products in stock, and uh, and try to ship as quickly as possible. Appreciate all the love and support, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next week. Have an amazing weekend. Take care.